Okay. Now it should be working. You hear me? Yeah. So where do we get cut off? We didn't actually. I'm just a fool. Now that I look at the same screen, you just cut us off. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I just figured, you know, you needed a break for a second. <laughs> You're awesome at podcasting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Been working at it. Yeah, practicing. So, original media was owned by Andrea. You, you pulled the plug basically on your microphone, or right after yeah, telling yeah. her. To get the no, fuck up I, there after now? After they told, after they said that we were going head to head, because I already, I told her, I was like, "Yo, you got everybody in this place, like pissed off, fucking going at me. Like you're not gonna make me look like some fucking jerk off." And I, I was like, "You took my whole argument with the Scott thing, you turned it into bullshit. Like this right. is, you're not gonna get away with this." And then she was like, no, 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 it's fine. Just go out there and do your best. I promise everything's gonna be okay. And then. Somehow or another, Scott overhears, quote on, I hope that, I hope that you can't see me, he doesn't uh, fuck up the perception of my air quotes. He overhears, <laughs> right? He overhears that guy, Luke Westman, talking about the design that he drew, that it's a snow leopard. And the guy says, his exact words were, anybody that colors this thing like a Dorito is going home. So me, seeing that it's just a leopard, I just colored the fucking thing brown like normal, and I still almost beat that bitch with everybody else. <laughs> you know what but, I mean? I got fucking so frazzled at the end. I was fucking How were like, you supposed to know the difference between it being a snow leopard or a Dorito? No, that's the whole point. And I still almost won. And the only thing they could get me on is that I didn't leave a skin break on my leaves. And it was at the end, and I was rushing to finish. And I right. just... You know what I mean? I just blasted the color in there, not even thinking, because I was like, fuck, I got like 10 minutes left. You know what I mean? And I was just like, oh, whatever. And I fucking, I still, I, my, they told me my lines were better, my fucking color was more even, fuck, everything was better. And they still sent me home. But I don't care. I had the best exit on that show. I had the best exit on that show. I'll I argue mean, that. You're, uh, yeah, but you couldn't show most of your exit. Like, I was watching when we were standing <laughs> right. on the street, and you kept, still kept trying to go at him. <laughs> you know, people um people that ask me every day how I real that was. There, like, just watching a free show, it was so good. I'm like, let them fight. Just let them fucking fight and get it over with. It'll take five minutes. You let them punch each other a few times. We'll be right back to work. Nobody wants well, you to had the best me. response, for sure. They put, it, they put it on there. Yeah, well, you had the best response. What was it? Um. Like sometimes oh, yeah. men just need to punch each other in the face. It's the way of the world. <laughs> yeah. It is. I, my wife feels, and I think most people feel, that they noticed a bias as, as the critiques were going on. And certainly yeah. a bias towards the favor of Scott, but also a bias kind of against everything that I was doing. And, and so it's hard to understand, I guess, and I, I I wouldn't mind hearing a perspective from somebody who was just there. Like you, you well, like, was that, was I going crazy? I felt like I was no, going no, crazy. No, no, no. They were pushing you, but you have to remember something. Like why else would they do a full psych profile on all of us before they got us in there? It's not so that they know if we're going to flip out or not. It's so that they can make us flip out or not. It's a big difference, bro. Well, I was surprised that I passed it. You didn't pass you know, you know, you didn't well, when it came up to be one of those people that they could well, fuck with, they thought right, they could get right. the best out of me, but I lied on my psych profile. I always do. Well, okay, it's probably the smartest thing. See, I've been I've been profiled a few times since I was a kid because I was a bad kid. So, like, I already know what they're going to do. So I put on a completely different persona. If you go back and check their records, I misspelled my name on the the psych eval. On purpose. I spelled my last name with two L's just to be a dick. Just to let them know that nothing in there was true, not even my name. <laughs> okay. I was wondering why. When they come around, when the producers would come around and they'd be like, yo, so-and-so said this, doesn't that upset you? And I would just look them in their face with this smug fucking grin and go, why do you think that would upset me? And they don't know what to do. They just fucking <laughs> run away and they fucking get Andrea on the thing. Right, Andre, he's not playing and that's ball. that's why I haven't been on five seasons of Ink Master while other people have. Because I don't fucking cooperate. Anybody you see on there a whole bunch of times, they do whatever the fucking producers tell them to. You know, I do watch, when, when, when I've seen friends of ours go back, it seems as though their concession, whatever, it seems like that gets more 
programmed. Like I can hear the producers through their voices. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Did you wait, see? Wait. You're like, no, nah, that, that was something that was fed to him. I don't believe I did. Dude, I'm so Which proud of the Dunson episode. Because, <laughs> let me tell you something. Speak There's right into the there. into the into the microphone too, if you can. A little muddled oh, over my bad. here. I want that to come across badass. Yeah. So go on. No, because now that I'm up and walking. That's why. So I um, <laughs> I I went for the redemption episode. Right. I didn't even want to go. They talked me into it. They were like, "This is going to be good." And I'm like, "It's not going to be good. It's never fucking good." But whatever. I'll do it anyway. So I go there. I was the first person, the first one that they bombarded with three people. They never did that before. I was the first one. They didn't show my episode of that first, but I was the first one they did it to, right? So they bring out the first two. It was that chick I said I wanted to drop a toolbox on her head, and that guy that <laughs> screamed about the devil, you know what I'm saying, right? Uh, well, while while you were tattooing about, him? Yeah, the guy who screamed, he said, I want the devil. Remember that guy when Rob Zombie was there? Oh, I wasn't so, there yeah. when Rob was there, dude. I was oh. already kicked off. Oh, I can't remember when happened. When, when I missed happened. all the cool people. He came right. on with the demon, right? Wasn't he? Yeah, he was the demon. Er, the demon he pretty, he's a nice dude, man. He wasn't a bad guy at all. It's way taller oh, yeah. than I thought. Way fucking taller oh, really? than I thought. Yeah, yeah. He's like like 6'5". Big dude. Um, oh, wow, yeah. Was, I didn't expect that. But anyway, Makes sense with some of his casting choices. Have you ever met um, that... that uh, Oh fuck! How do I forget his name? The dude that was in House of House of a Thousand Corpses, though the first one. No, no, no! The big tall guy. He used to travel oh, with us at Phil oh, and yeah. He was in a bunch of movies. He always plays a freak, wasn't he? In like uh, that one where they set off the nuclear bombs and then they were raping everybody. It was fucking. <laughs> oh, he was in Westworld. The West Hills World. have eyes. The Hills have eyes. Oh, was he in that? Yeah, I, I don't know. So. I think he was also in that. He was like one of those mutated people. Robert Mueller or something, right? Oh, yeah, I wish yeah. I could get the name right. I'll have to put it in or something like that or have, have uh, Mark or Candy do it. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, he used to travel with us at Villain Arts, and he's um, he's like eight foot tall. Jesus, that's awesome. And he told me on the set, he says it was the first time he's ever been on a set, and he wasn't the tallest guy there. He says it's that's never cool. like that. He says everybody in Hollywood's super short, and when he was on a Rob Zombie set, everybody was super tall. He was like, oh, I wasn't wow. even the tallest guy. People, this one dude was dropping through the fucking doorway. I had to duck his head to get through the doorway. Maybe Rob Zombie's just freaked out by small people. Maybe, yeah, like that song by uh, that that one Newman guy. But I hate small people, short people. Yeah, don't he might just be like, no He's just like freaked out by tiny people. He can't be around them. I don't know. He watches a lot of Asian porn for somebody who is freaked out by tiny people. I don't want to know how you know that. You you don't know that he does? How do you why, not know why, that? Why do I know what kind of porn Rob Zombie watches? Because he shares it with his audience. I follow him on Instagram. <laughs> and I've never heard one word about porn. Well, what so about the song, the song Devil Man? The song Devil Man is a song from a Japanese anime porn, isn't it? I know it's from a Japanese <laughs> anime. I, once again, I don't know. But now... Yeah. Devil I'll Man, Devil it. Man, Crawl Man. Yeah, I'll yeah, listen it's, to it uh, that is the name of, uh, it could be, just, it may not be hentai, it could be wrong. And now I just look like, like, I just figure once they start messing with, with adult theme cartoons, it's going to have monster porn in it eventually. But no, he, yeah. I went to a concert of his, one of the things was this Asian girl, she's running, she's running, and she's like dressed up like superhero, but she's naked. She's running, and it's on the backdrop, right? This is when he's playing with Pantera. She's running, and this whole army's chasing her. And they get to the spot where she's cornered, she turns around, and um, kind of floats in the air and spreads her legs. And you don't see any of that. You know, that's not allowed in Japan anyways. But right. immediately a light starts emanating from her cooch. And all I can figure, because, and then she swallows up the whole army. The whole army's disappeared inside of her uh, so she bangs her vagina the whole army. Being. Is that what the symbolism is? Or she just bangs the whole army? Uh, well, she, she, she definitely, like, she consumed them through her vagina. That was my thought. <laughs> I'm going to say they ran a train on her. But same thing. Same well, she she definitely came out in control. If she was running, if she, if she was running the train, if she was getting the train ran on her, it was only because she wanted it. Right, right. It was a voluntary train, but a train nonetheless. Yeah, she. Nobody was happy with their outcome. I, I mean, right. they all disappeared. Families, loved ones, like writing notes and stuff. Yeah. What happened to, no to, matter which way it went down, you wouldn't let your kids watch the video. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they, and that was like that was the first time I ever watched a Rob Zombie live. And uh, and from that, then I, I've been into comic books for a long time. 
And so, um, who is it? Glenn Danzig, you're familiar with. Mm-hmm. He, he used to write for Verotic, which was an a, a adult um, themed. Uh, I don't know. It's, it gets it gets to where you're like I, I was down with the idea of the cartoon porn at some point, especially as I was I was coming up like tits everywhere. But when it gets to tits and dicks everywhere, you're just like ah, I don't know. Yeah. But but that that seemed to be Glenn Singer, possibly the artist that he was working with. He really did Death Dealer, I think, more in Grub Girl. No no chicks with dicks in those ones. But nice. it appears to be the highest hierarchy of Japanese porn is chicks with dicks. Yeah, they have like the what is it called? It's like a futo, something like that. I don't know, but I wouldn't want to. Get, I'm not even going to guess at the pronouns because I'm going to get them all wrong. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, my pronouns. son's going to yell at me. <laughs> Can't he, play he, the I'm pronoun not, game anymore. You're not allowed to say he, she. Her, was there a he. pronoun game? The pronoun game is supposed to be like you just you see a boy and you say him. Now you're not allowed to assume that anymore. You have to just be like, hey, what are you? <laughs> yeah. What, what 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 is what's going on over there? You I don't know. Can oh, they... Okay, you have a dick. Do you acknowledge that you have a dick? No. All right. Cool. I didn't want to assume. You know what I mean? You have to be real careful. I think the whole thing uh, that my son explains it to me is they just don't want you to even worry about it. Why are you think? Why are you worrying about my dick, old man? That's that's what? his. <laughs> Nobody's worried about it. People are just saying facts. Like, you're allowed to say true things. This whole thing when nobody's allowed to say the truth is fucking dangerous, dude. Like, yeah. you're allowed to say true things. If you're a girl, just because you're not happy about the fact that you're a girl doesn't mean that you're not a fucking girl. Get over it. Right, but maybe they don't want you to, to uh, sexualize them. You know, so like, then, why, why does so my then, sex have anything to do with our relationship? I feel like you should stop worrying about my well, sex. Well, it wouldn't... Nothing is an issue until somebody makes it an issue. You call a girl a she, and she's like, you can't call me she. Well, now you're taking common knowledge and telling people that it's not. You're wrong. You're, you're, what you're seeing, you're not actually seeing. So you change the rules, but you didn't tell anybody you changed the rules. You can't just go do that shit. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell me that water's not wet, and I'm supposed to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not wet, huh? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like right. Now, what, about the, what about the truly ambiguous? What about the truly ambiguous? I don't accept it. What about the truly ambiguous, though? What about those that you're like, I have no if idea. If you were truly where... ambiguous, no matter what anybody said, you wouldn't be bothered by it. You wouldn't care because you're ambiguous. No, no. But what if to you, you wouldn't what? know what to call it? What if you can't tell if somebody's or, or a boy what or what to girl? call they? What to call they, I guess is what I, I say. I'm like, what's up, man? Hey, yo, yo, like, whatever. Hey, guy, girl, he, she, doesn't matter. Yo. Yeah. I, I'm like, yo, I, or buddy, or pal, I feel kind of bad because I usually go with brother because I grew up a Hulkamaniac. Right, right. The Hulk Hogan thing will screw you over nowadays. Yeah, I'll get I'll get different uh, approaches on it for sure. I, but you can't really call a girl a brother so much. Or if you, if you call her a sister, maybe she's going to get mad, I guess, at some point. I mean, I've or, never... or everybody could just remember what it's like to have a fucking sense of humor and just laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. They, they edit the sense of humor out, you know. Right, but that's the whole point. Yes, like, I know. I could be just as fucking neurotic and upset as everybody else, but instead I know how to laugh at shit, so I don't give a fuck. And also, remember when we were kids, bro? Sticks and stones would break my bones, but words can never hurt me. They took that out. Yeah, that changed. Now it's words are really violent. You can kill someone with a word. Yeah. It's fake. It's not real. It's misinformation. You can't kill somebody with words. You Mm -hmm. can kill them with kindness. You can kill somebody with, um... Drop a big truckload of kindness on their head. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of ways. (laughs) A toolbox full of kindness. Yeah, I'm going to kill them with kindness. I got a toolbox full of it. Even, let's say, like... I mean, dude... If you look at my fucking Instagram feed or Twitter or anything, especially now that our season's on Netflix, I got all these random assholes crawling out of the woodwork. You suck. You're an asshole. Leave Scott alone. I love it when they don't even know he's dead. Like, Leave Scott alone. You know what I mean? You don't tell him to stop beating a dead horse? I like, just, hey, come on, man. I, I do. One guy hit me up, and I was just like, yeah, he's not even alive right now. And I was like, oh, no response. You know what I mean? That's what they do to me is, is they, uh, they, they, they tell me um, – well, I don't know. Only ones 
you know, I get I get stupid in my head, so I only pay attention to the critique sometimes. And somebody will be like, that was like seven years ago. It's like, man, Netflix was yesterday. Calm down. This is my thing, ready? If, mm-hmm. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you are like, no matter who this person is, if you are a person who I've never seen, never met, never heard of, and you feel the need to reach out and tell me that you're angry about a TV show and the fact that I was selected to be on it and you need to like hit me up and try to insult me or try to do anything like that. I don't usually answer because you've already gone and labeled yourself as a pathetic, nobody (laughs) piece of shit who can't, you're not even good enough to be noticed by the world. So you have to try to get noticed by someone who has been noticed by the world. Like that's how little you offer. You are literally an NPC. You're like a fuck. You're telling everyone that you're an insignificant piece of shit and that you can't, you're not even a mosquito. At least a mosquito eats blood. You eat attention from people that have been noticed. You know what I'm saying? You're so much worse. So much Like less. a psychic vampire. Yeah. Like, just go fucking drown yourself in a toilet bowl full of piss and do everybody a favor. But, but now, uh, to offer the counter, but these people uh, possibly really are just looking for some interaction with somebody that they feel now is real. Because, well, then, I mean, one, they're not the reaching way. out to the people that they felt. <laughs> not, what's that? I said, then no. you came at me the wrong way. That's how that goes. <laughs> what are you doing? Hit me up. And they're like, yo, man, are you really like that? Or, you know, and the answer is, yeah, yep. on any given day. You can meet I, 20 been... different people that know me. They'll all tell you. One of them will tell you I'm a dick. One of them will tell you I'm funny. One of them will tell you I'm mean. One of them will tell you I'm aggressive. It's all true. It depends Dude, I've on met how all you those people. Me. Yeah, I've met all those people. You came at me. They're all right. <laughs> They're all right. None of them are wrong. You I'm are all of people. those things. I and all of those dick. people. You can me the wrong way, I'll be the worst person you ever met in your fucking life. I'll make you regret ever speaking to me. Or yep. we could be friends. Totally. Uh, what was it? Uh, somebody who, who who's <laughs> eating with you is a difficult thing. It is. In the house. Is it still? I haven't eaten with you since. I don't believe what that we have What made it difficult? Eaten. What was the difficult part? Oh, come on. Uh, the yeah. open mouth or possibly the, the no, no, burping no, no. So, straight up in somebody's face. Whose face did you, you remember burp right I had the fucking, I had sinus problems. I couldn't breathe through my nose. Oh, somebody was saying something to you. No? Yeah, I had no, Jim was <laughs> the one that complained about it the most. Okay. Yeah. I remember you burping right in his face. And just be I like, did. well, that's all that. Right I on. burped right in his face. Then he tattooed some girl. He got all jealous when I wound up dating her, and then he stalked the bitch for months and then wound up, like, breaking her down to date him. It was one of the more pathetic things I've ever seen. So. Oh, come on. Jim. No, 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 really. It's disgusting. I you, hate you've that seen guy. pathetic yeah. things. You've seen Dave Navarro get turned down. I had one of our other friends from the show. I'm not going to put his name out there, but he was at a convention with Jim. And Jim was all drunk talking shit about me. <laughs> and he turned to him, and he just goes, hey. Jay's my friend. You're going to talk that shit? Don't fucking do it around me. And you got all fucking scared and clammed right up. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. He hit me up right away to tell me, dude. He's like, yo, man, it made me miss you. <laughs> I love Jim. I do love Jim. Yeah, no, I uh, Not at all. Really? No, love, yeah. Am I wrong no, in thinking yeah. Jim was the person who – Jim was the first person to bring it to my attention that Scott was using uh, material that he had already done before. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. I figured no, that he was behind. Fine. I got. I got personal issues with him. I don't give a shit. Uh, oh right, right. You guys went back and forth with the same girl. You guys are Eskimo cousins or something. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't back and forth. He went. Hey, we're all her. Eskimo cousins. He, he, we he all tried got to get her. Didn't get her. She wound up dating me. Then I broke up with her. And like, however long later, he wound up like still like stalking her the whole time until he broke her down. You know what it is with girls. You're persistent enough, you'll get them. They'll eventually just be like, fine, I'll date you. I didn't know that. I didn't, you didn't know, know that. about that. Grandma never told you about the fucking persistent. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. She gave me the the wedding sack. <laughs> that like a was that some Borat stuff there? Back in the day, when a girl didn't want to be stalked, they just called playing it hard to get. So no means no is a weird one for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm cool with it, but you know. Some people Who is it? Bill Burr says that. No means no, but no means no. It's kind no. of different. No means no, but 50 no's and one yes is a yes. Right. Nine times out of ten, 
Yeah. But it's it's that yeah. tenth time. That's magic. No, no means no, but fifty no's and one yes is a yes. I don't know the math there, but I'm gonna just I'll just accept it. I, I mean, but, I, I, keep I, saying I, no, and they keep saying no, and you just keep asking, and then they say yes. Now the answer is yes. Let me ask you a few of these questions I have written down in front of me, brother. Oh, um, right. Some of them already been answered. Scott Samurai how, Samurai Horse Drama. I can just cross that one off the list. It sounds like. Yeah, we covered that. Uh, but this one, I, I actually, I'm just skipping down to the very last one because it's the best one. I mean, the other ones I'll, I'll ask again but also. But would I love this one. Would you go on the show as a human canvas? No way, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, <laughs> never in your life would I ever. Do you respect the human canvases? Um, well, I'm going to take that question and I'm going to break it into several other questions to answer it. Um, do you respect anyone that wants something that should be valuable to be free? Do you respect anyone who takes an artist, puts them under a major amount of pressure, and then raises their expectations? I don't. <laughs> I don't respect those kind of people. I don't respect people that walk through life with their hand out, wanting something free, and then being willing to nitpick what they're given. Like, that's not – you're, you're training people to be cunts. You know what I'm saying? There's no – no. I don't respect the human canvases. I don't respect any of that shit because they're all picked – you know how they're picked. So I went over this. Uh, yeah. That yeah. girl, the, the girl producer, the one that was in charge of giving the speech that riled up the human canvases before they got to us, I knew okay. that girl. She dated my ex-girlfriend. I spoke so to how her. is it? I know how is it? I didn't speech. know that they, I mean, I knew that they would speak to them, but I always figured it was on an individual basis. No, 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 no. At the very end, they sit them in the room right before they come out to us. And she would go in there and say, all right, now listen, you guys all came here, and you came here to be on TV. But the only thing that's guaranteed to be on TV is your tattoo. If you want to be on TV, you have to have something to say. Now, don't let these artists tell you that they can't do it. They're the best in the world. They're just trying to make it easy for themselves. So if you have an idea and they don't want to work with it, don't you back down. That's what oh, they wow. fucking said. Yeah, that's what it felt like they said. She I told mean, you me certainly... word for word what they said. We were sitting in a bar. She told me everything. I'm not going to say the girl's name. I don't, she doesn't work for them anymore, but she did. Yeah. Well, I don't think it matters. They're not union. So they're, I don't, well, they're yeah, they're not even together anymore. Is original yeah, media you, you even know, together? what I'm saying, if you actually drop that girl's name, they blacklist her. I can't do that. Right, right. Oh, they did. They blacklisted. Well, they didn't blacklist, but there was one dude there that um, his girlfriend was a ballet performer. He was just a producer. It was on the first time I was on, and one of the guys was going home. And they took a picture. No one knew who this guy was. You know, they no one knew he was on the show, and they took a picture together at the bar, and then he posted it. The artist posted it on his Instagram. They just said hanging out with friends. It didn't have a location. It didn't have anything like that. And they fired the producer. We never saw him again. Wow. He was a, he was actually you've probably seen the guy before because he's hilarious. Um, Nikolai was his name. He was a surfer from Hawaii who uh, was in a Hershey's commercial um, where his buddy picks him up. There's a black guy, white guy. He's, this is the white guy. Black guy picks him up. They're driving together, and uh, he's just complaining, complaining, complaining about everything. And uh, he, he's, he's like, fucking birds or whatever, you know. And, and then um, the guy offers him a Snickers bar. Remember that when the Snickers first started out with that commercial where it was like Snickers kind of chills you out? Oh yeah, yeah, because everybody's all cranky. You're hangry when you yeah. not you when you don't eat. Yeah, yeah. And then later, after he eats the Snickers bar, he's getting attacked by birds and shit. And he's like, "Oh, I love birds or some shit," you know. It's, <laughs> uh, but anyways, that guy was fired. We never saw him again because they took a picture together and posted it with no hashtag. Nothing. There was no way it could have ever been traced back. But uh, so they, yeah, they, they uh, all of your shit. Oh yeah, they took it pretty seriously. Because they, they got that $2, $2 million um, non-disclosure, right, NDA that we all sign. Yeah. Where if we say the wrong shit, they're going to try and get $2 million from you on it. Yeah. Well, that's expired, so they can go fuck themselves. Is it? Oh, good. I didn't <laughs> – I never know, but I, I, you know how it is. We're yeah. men. We, we act as, as we do, and we'll wait until we, we'll suffer like, the consequences. I see it now, like they're, they're starting up. 
another tattoo show on there with that guy. Fucking remember that dude that was a real piece of shit as a judge when he came on? Tony Hundo? No, that was a different no, season. Um, the other guy, Montoya. Oh, you guys hated him. I loved him. Nah, <laughs> yeah, I loved a, him. He he pissed my client off. He made my client uncomfortable. He fucking he was the one that was like, "Who cares what they want? Just tattoo something on them." You know right. what I mean? Yeah, like, no, I remember. It, do you remember uh, Matty Hickson getting everybody a laugh over sushi when he started acting like Tony Montoya was judging farts? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sometimes a fart isn't even as juicy as I said it would be, but I still charge <laughs> the same price. I'm like, it's still a fart. As far as a fart is a fart, man. We were Matty's so ready to laugh it. that day. I, I don't know if that was so funny as it was, it was just the proper time. Like, we all needed that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was getting to be where we hadn't laughed or been human in a while. I know. Yeah, that's, what people what, don't, that's the shit that people don't see. Like the, also, removal, the removal of yourself from yourself. That's the part where it's like, <laughs> like I try to explain. When I came home, dude, from being there for two months, I came home. I didn't tell anybody, not any of my closest people, that I was home for about five days. I didn't tell my family. I didn't tell anybody. I sat in the house by myself just trying to, like, figure out how to be me again. It was fucking weird, dude. It was, like, depressing. It was, I don't know, it was a weird fucking transition coming back and, like, trying. I'm like, what do I do here? Like, I don't even remember my fucking routine, you know? I do. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just nodding my head at home and letting you speak because it's yeah. like preach, brother. <laughs> I don't, yeah. uh, it took me a long time to start to remember that I was an artist and that I had to kind of kick those guys out of my head. Their voices are always in my head, shitting on every choice that I make, making me yeah. second guess it. And, and, you know, I have to kind of straighten that out and be like, Oh wait, no, fuck them. I do art. They, yeah. you know, are TV people. You know, like, one, of the most they therapeutic, one of the most therapeutic things I did when I came back, it was on that point where I didn't speak to anybody. I took like, I took not a lot, like less than an eighth of uh, mushrooms, and I mm -hmm. just sat there, and I had to really convince myself. Like, I had to really look back at the last couple of months and just be like, okay, I have been lied to to my face by producers about what's going on every single day. Let me just look back. And really remember, like, is that really how it happened? Right. And I fucking had to, I had to actually, like, look back and be like, no, yeah, that's, that's, they're fucking trying to tell me it's this, but it's that. You have to convince yourself that you're not fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't have a, your normal support structure yeah. that you rely on to give you the feedback. So your reality then is altered to the feedback you're getting. Yeah. And they're I, just telling you bullshit, like. Plus, you get the whole all day long. This one said this. That one said that. <gasps> this one said this one about your tattoo. You see how those two are talking over there? I bet it's about you. You know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> all day. Nobody gets that shit. Hey, if you were going to start a cult, what's the first thing you do? You do. Oh, you fucking you get everybody in there and you fucking remove them from their own lives. Yes. Cut them off from everything in their life. That's what all but, cults do. Then, then the next thing would be to start controlling their food, I would imagine. Well, first it's the food, it's the sleep patterns. Remember waking us up with the fake stars and monoxide alarms and making us stand out in well, the street at two thirty in the I've morning? I've seen you write about that. But remember, yeah. don't don't you think that that was real or not? No. Because eventually, remember when it when it was finally real, N Navarro was out of there. Yeah. No, the you know what I mean. That's it, that's why I figured it was real. The one actually happened. That's what, the same thing. Like the day that you. We were joking. Me and Maddie were making jokes. The day that you tried to fight Kyle, right? <laughs> Nunez. The, the day you yes. tried to fight Nunez. Whatever. The day you fought him, tried to fight him, they kept getting in your way. But the day that that happened, me and Maddie were just making jokes. We're like, yo, did you notice that the second, the second that any kind of physical shit went on, Dave was nowhere to be found? <laughs> yeah. The second it went on, it was like he turned into a bat and just flew away. Like he was gone. Those uh, Hollywood types, of, you know, they understand the importance of protecting the insurance Dude, rider. The second they got physical, you couldn't find Dave. He was gone. Out yeah, it was probably, there was probably an insurance policy guy whose job it is just to be on set. He probably, he probably came by with a fucking Secret Service fucking earpiece and scooped him up. He might like, have this isn't safe for you right now, sir. He might have filed a claim just for getting frazzled. I, I'm, I know that Nunez did. He, he felt that, that they pushed no. it too far.
Oh, you know? Really? Yeah, the, he, the, or, or at least the, he should have been made aware about how I was uh, on the brink. Like, you saw me the night before. First of all, I do. I remember. I remember when I woke up at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. I had to take a piss, and you were awake with fucking headphones on, drawing on your Wacom. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. And then the next morning, I was usually one of the first people up to, like, make breakfast. I get up. You're already eating. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, honestly, I'm kind of like, like, my memory's a bit of a blur. But no, I do remember. That night. I remember. I do remember telling night. people, like the producers, you know, that there was things that I needed, and they would keep asking me about my sanity. They're not my sanity, but you know, they're like, "How's it going to go when you see, day, you know, Nunez tomorrow?" And then I would answer, and it wouldn't be a a good. It wasn't like it's going to be perfect, you know. It wouldn't be the answer they wanted, and mm-hmm. then they would supplant their own answer. Yeah. Like as though, it, and and then I just a nod and be like, oh yeah, that what you said, that sounds better, you know. Yeah. They're like, they're like, yeah, but you're not gonna fight with them, right? And I'm like, uh, no. Now I don't know. They might have been pushing me to fight with them by, by even putting the suggestion out there, you know, by even the, using the words. But it felt yeah. like they were trying to talk me down, just really bad at it. Like they're the yeah. people that they, they see the guy on the ledge, and they're like, yeah, hey man, don't jump. Even though I could completely understand why you would, man. Yeah. Cause fuck. Of course it's easier to just end it, but don't do this. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, you don't need to think about all the depressing things that have gone on in your life, you yeah. know? Like, you lost your job, I understand, and right. your, pot, your, your, your parents passed. Yeah. And- <laughs> so what? Your parents are dead. They took your house away, and you have no prospects. Big deal. Girls <laughs> don't even like you. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Yeah. And just because your home's ugly, it doesn't matter. I understand you're just about to lose it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What so evictions in. You're going to. You don't yeah. have to worry about anybody making fun of your shitty house anymore. Now they just make fun of the fact that you live in your car. It's going to be great. <laughs> Those guys were, yeah, pretty bad at talking me down, at least. Um, is Everybody asked me continually if the fight was real or. or people some ask people me that put all up. The time. They ask me all the time. If the, well, then you saw it. <laughs> you know. You saw I, I it going. I was watching the playback from when you charged at him because everybody else gets nervous and when you watch me, bro, I didn't move. <laughs> I didn't move. I was, I was like, okay, good. They're going to fight now. Let's get, let's get it over with. Nobody Remember when – um, They're all trying to break believe, it up. I'm like, what are you doing? They're two grown men that want to fight. Let them fucking fight. Do you remember when uh, Ashley was up getting critiqued? Well, she wasn't in her turn to get critiqued, but she was already crying about it. Yeah, yeah, and you and flipped it, out on her. <laughs> I flipped out on her. I look back at the video, and it's like I see you, like, jumping up and down in excitement. I was laughing so fucking hard, dude. Cause honestly, like, I, I felt bad about that I day. I was about to say, shut the fuck up, but then you did it, and I was like, cool, I don't have to. <laughs> If if you notice, the first time I say anything to her, I'm actually on a on a stool. Yeah, because we remember we took a break because everybody. Oh, they let you take. No, they had so everybody long. else in a line. I I I just went down on a stool and was like, no, "Fuck this shit." No, but I remember shit. at one point though, you yelled at her when we were like not even really filming, but the cameras were still on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, well, that was good during the break. They, they were, were taking like, my right, stool from me. Let's chill out. You were like, you know what, goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Uh, uh, that was fun. I had somebody approach me recently. Actually, one of the guys that works for Razorblade gets tattooed or knows her, and and he knew her back then too. <laughs> and uh, he's, he, he, she's grown quite a bit. So oh, yeah. I shouldn't. None of us are who we were back then. No, no. You know, you th- hey, somebody wanted to know if you thought I was paranoid. Uh, <laughs> not, not. Unrightfully so, though. <laughs> right. Like, you kept yeah. saying that they were fucking with you, but if you remember, I was the one of the ones that told you, like, the day that I showed up on there and you weren't in there yet, there was a box for you. It was your glasses. And then the producer guy took them and they made you wait, like, three fucking weeks before they gave them to you. For yeah, and they broke my computer, too. They, I don't know if you remember that. When it came, they knew that it was there for you, and you were asking for it, and they all played dumb. So they were trying <laughs> to rile you up. Right. Like, that was done on purpose. They were definitely trying to get you, like, 
you know that the whole voting thing is fake, right? Like when people vote on TV shows like American Idol, like the one they voted on you to bring you back, you know that's not real. No, I, I refuse to believe that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I benefited too greatly from it. I refuse right. to believe that. <laughs> yeah, nothing that anybody votes on on TV is real. I'm sorry to shatter everybody's fucking illusions, but I know a lot of people that work in TV. All they're doing is figuring out how to program it for next year. That's all they're doing. They're taking opinion. <laughs> but what do, what do um, you mean program it for next year? Well, like American Idol, right? Everybody votes so they know who everybody's favorite. Now they know how everybody reacted to each one of those characters. Now next year when they put other people into those same character slots, they know which one is going to be the most likable. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, I do, yes. It's, just psych it's, psych it's psychological warfare. Like well, I'm what, uh, for, already happening. It's just happening on social media. People don't realize it. Well, for mine, it, I understood that if, if, if there was any truth to the voting, it felt that I had the best statistical chance. Do you follow me? Because voting for everybody yeah. quit after they were removed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For my season. And you were there so, for a long time. I was there right up to the last. Yeah, so I have no, one extra week that. of votes. You and know? It works out on paper. So nobody really However, it. Well, how, however, it seems like then it should have been a different artist, possibly, than Chris May, who went home so much earlier. Right. You know? But the reason that they picked you, I think, is because, like I said, you remember, they do a full psych workup on all of us. They they know more about you than you realize, <laughs> including yeah. all your triggers and shit, which is what they want to know. Because yeah. people like me and you are more volatile. The only reason that they didn't have anything on me, like I said, I fucking lied. I wouldn't tell them anything about <laughs> me that would actually piss me off. I don't Probably fucking smart. expose my nerves to anybody. Are you fucking crazy? You know what I mean? You want to fucking ask some personal questions, you're not going to get the answer. You can ask all you want. You're not gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, I do. Some fucking TV idiot. I offer TV it too much. By far, are the most soulless people I can think of on the planet, besides bankers. Have you met very many people in the music industry? Then uh, I, I put them kind of together. <laughs> okay, Basically, right. I, I was bankers. curious. Yeah. You know, TV killed the radio star. You know, they just move from one genre to the other. It's all six yes. to one, half a dozen to the other. Putting somebody else out there and using their talent for your gain is inherently evil. Wait, wait, so, wait. Hold up. That's what I'm doing right now. Welcome to my podcast. Technically, though, you're coming to the table with your own skill set, and then you're just inviting your friends. That's not the same thing. That's what you imagine. I, I, I knew I was like, who, who could I talk to that could fill up an hour? Because I, I don't have anything to say anymore. Oh, my God. I got, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to start my own podcast now just to fucking keep like, going. Jay's got some time. Oh, yeah. Do it. Oh, oh, yeah. It's, honestly, this has been a lot of fun. I've been amazed at the response that I've gotten. It wouldn't happen yeah, if, they, you, if it wasn't like for Stinkmaster. I'm in the top top 50. Uh, Mark says, 50% of podcasts. However, since there's billions and billions of podcasts, it's really not that high. Right. But I guess there's a chance to get it to the top 20, and if that happened, then I would have to actually do this, or <laughs> I would have to maybe pay attention to it. So far, it just started as, a, as something to have some audio to answer questions yeah. on my website, and uh, people enjoyed it enough that you know, we'll see. We'll see when they get tired of me. You, you know yeah. how long I. You know, what about three weeks or something like that? Until you you're like, ah, shut three the fuck weeks up. To a month, and we need a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's about how long we lived together before you were probably like, oh god, yeah. I noticed how long I stayed with you before I could. Yeah. Yeah, and then after that, I was like, all right, I need a break. But yeah, know, this I General J. When you were asking about the eating before, I fucking got, like, I got the problem fixed. I got, like, medication or whatever. I got off the nasal spray. I don't use nasal spray anymore, but I was using it for a while, and it fucked Every day, yeah. yeah. You yeah, were, like, addicted. We were we were thinking maybe you had something in there. You were, yeah, like, getting friends to bring you up Coke or something. I'm also pretty sure I got, like, a really deviated septum, which doesn't help anything. But, uh, yeah, no, I don't know, man. When you come up straight and you got a broken thing. nose? I'm, I'm, no. I'm talking over you. I'm sorry. No, you, I you don't have a broken nose. A broken, yeah. broken nose. I only had a hairline fracture in my nose one time. I fought this kid uh, that was a boxer. 
and I was young, you know. So, like, this dude was fast. He kept jabbing me in the nose, jabbing me in the nose. And I'm like, uh, you know, you, you know when you get to that realization when you're in a fight, you're like, wait, am I losing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and all of a sudden, it just dawns on me. Like, out of nowhere, I'm like, we're in the street. There's no fucking referee. Dude, I fucking tackled this kid to the ground. I just started dropping elbows on him. I'm like, dance around that, you little fuck. Next thing you know, it was a whole different fight. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> You you yeah. trained several different arts, yeah, uh, yeah martial I, arts. Yes, yes, I did. I got okay. black belts in a couple of them, but for the most part, I just, you know, I would travel around, find somebody who was really good, train with them for a while. Yeah, I, I trained a little bit, but I mostly didn't get black belts. I got black eyes. Yeah, black eyes also <laughs> come with it as part of it. <laughs> it takes a certain kind of idiot to be good at getting hit in the head. You know what I'm saying? You watch MMA anymore? I haven't been following it recently because of my shop. I just that's it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing, but I've been um I've been working on doing some stuff with my shop, building it up because my well, crew perfect. is getting bigger and I'm expanding. That's a question. Yeah. <laughs> What's your shop's name? Oh, Kinetic Body Art. Cut that off. Is it spelled with a K? Yes. It would have Kinetic to be, wouldn't Body it? Kinetic Body Art Gallery in Levittown, New York. And uh, I- I'm about to actually uh I mean nothing's official yet. But I'm looking to expand pretty soon. There's going to be some announcements coming soon. I'm going to be uh, upgrading, big upgrade. What do you want? You're going to move to a different place, or you're just trying to yeah. have two well, places? It's kind of out of necessity. I'm in a building right now where my landlord hasn't fixed anything in so long that the fucking place is rotting around me. Like, and she's old. She's in her 80s. She's not going to do anything. It's going to be one of those right. things where she just tries to collect rent until she dies, and then whoever gets this building next, it's their problem. So right. I ain't sticking around for that shit. You know what I mean? Yep, I do. So... I'm looking at, uh, I got a couple of things. I'm looking at somewhere close. So it's not, I'm not going to be changing neighborhoods or anything, so it won't be a major thing. But if I get the place that I'm looking into getting, it's going to be a big upgrade. It's going to be like a much nicer place, much more room. Much, you, you, know. got a, you got a partner? No. Okay. I remember well, last time you had a partner. Who is it, the, the porn girl? Oh, the partner. <laughs> can you talk about that? Maybe I shouldn't I can, even say her name. I can, and it's okay, fucking right hysterical on. because the other day I go on fucking Instagram. Now, I'm a fan of Jesse James. I like his stuff he fabricates. I like the trucks and the bikes he makes and shit, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's fucking dating him, bro. <laughs> well, he's always dating porn stars. I know, well, well, but now he's dating her my name? own business partner, and I'm like, now you ruined it. Like, now I don't want to watch this guy build stuff. He's all <laughs> gushing over her on all of his Instagram posts. I'm about to unfollow this motherfucker. What, who, what, what is her name? What is Bonnie her name? Rodney. Bonnie okay. Rodney. So I remember she had some horrible tattoos, tattoos on her breasts. Terrible tattoos. She got the tattoos on her tits when she was 16. Yeah, that's bad. You should have round well, stuff on tits. You shouldn't have. Well, how do you get somebody them, pouring over your tits that young? Yeah, and how do you how do you have that's terrible. Who who what who tattoos a sixteen year old's tits? The tattoo artist that was fucking her at the time, from what she said. Yeah, I get that. Uh, I know, that's one of the things I point out to people <laughs> that uh, some of the worst people in the world are are attracted to our industry. Yeah, unfortunately, it's true. It's what, uh, you know, but Sailor yeah, so Jerry said that. I wound up tattooing her. I met her at a convention. I tattooed her. The way I met her at the convention was I wound up actually getting trophies. She was, they, they had her, she showed up at a convention. They had her judge. Mm-hmm. So one of my buddies went up there. He was like a fucking super fan of hers. I didn't even know who the hell she was. So he goes up there and he gives her my card, and I wound up winning a trophy. Actually, a couple that day. So I got a few awards for the stuff I was showing, so she remembered me. We just started talking. And then, you know, I got her info. We we kept in touch because she wanted to get tattooed. I wound up tattooing her a few times. And then it was just one of those things. Like, I was in a place where I had to get out of there, and I was looking to open yeah. my own spot anyway. She was like, you know, I'm you fucking super into tattoos. I always wanted to do something. It was one of those things where... You know, it's like a Hail Mary, bro. Like, if I do this and it doesn't work, if it works, I'm a genius. If it doesn't work, I'm an idiot. And everybody already thinks I'm an idiot. So where the fuck am I? I got nothing to lose. I don't care. Right. Let me try it. So I tried it. And for the first month and a half, it worked exactly the way it was supposed to. And then the excuses started rolling in because we didn't have anywhere where we were going to get foot traffic. It was in an industrial neighborhood in Brooklyn. 
So we were using social media to get everybody in there every day. And one of the draws was that she was going to be there. Not all the time, but here and there, you know? Right. She lived right in the neighborhood. It was super fucking easy. And like I said, for the first month, it worked. We were making money like crazy. And then all of a sudden the excuses started. Oh, I can't do it. I got to be here. Oh, I can't do it. I got to be there. Oh, I got right. this to do. Oh, I got that to do. You know. And there's other so it wasn't shit, her first business. Put, huh? She had, it wasn't her first business. It, it was no, her... Um, no, 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 no. She had it, and it wasn't her first... More yeah, than priority. Shop. And also, you know, she had other commitments with her other career. And I'm like... That's cool, but I don't give a shit. You're still supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Like, I show up seven days a week, open to close. You need right. to be doing something. We're partners. You know what I mean? So it didn't work out that way. It wound up being me doing everything. And then once she stopped doing the shit to, like, attract people to it every day, we didn't have enough business to keep it up, and it just went under. And I just, as soon as I saw it going down, I just pulled my money and all my shit out of there and was like, peace. Right. And that's the end of that. So then when I left, I lost everything on that. Like, the amount of money that I lost to her is not a lot of money. To me, it was all the money I had. So Okay, right, yeah. I had, to start, I had to start from literally nothing. So I did what survivors do, you know what I mean? I looked around, I found a fucking store that I would, knew that I would be able to afford the rent on my own, and I fucking talked to the real estate guy, I used some charisma and a little bit of bullshit, and I fucking just got myself in there. I, I wound up having, you know, I negotiated, found out how much money I needed to get the place. I booked that many tattoos and just fucking handed all the money straight over. Now I had a place. And then I kept... Same place the you're at now? Or? The place I'm at now. I kept paper in the okay. windows for six months. I fucking tattooed with the lights off in the front window like nobody even knew I was there. I was tattooing just longtime clients. And then... I built myself up enough money to start, you know, making that place nicer. And I just gradually built it. Now it's been five years and I'm looking to expand. I'm looking now, to how is it? it. You, you were on a TV show. Yes. A really famous TV show. Mm -hmm. It's still making millions of dollars now, thanks to Netflix. How is it that you didn't have money from the Netflix deal? See, that's, again, I covered that in the article that I wrote. So we, as you know, I know this is you know, <laughs> yeah. before you're asking it, but. I'm teeing so, you up, bro. Yeah, so when we get on the show, nobody gets on that show without having to sign away their rights to royalties or any kind of payment after the fact. Rich people, the actors are rich people because you can do one television show, and if it's popular enough, you will get, paychecks for the rest of your life, you will never, ever have to work again because you will keep getting paid every time that is. <laughs> if that was the case, I would be buying my second house right now. You know what I mean? Oh, we get yeah. nothing from that after the fact. We get no All those royalties go to Dave Navarro, who is already filthy rich. They go to Oliver Peck, who is a racist. And they go to Chris <laughs> Minguez, who has been arrested for domestic abuse many times, but they don't go to us. They don't go to the people that actually did the work. They don't go to the people that actually put their career on the line. They don't actually go to the people that risk literally everything for a chance at something that they never actually had a chance at. So that's how that works. They <laughs> rob us of all that, and they are still getting fat off it while we sit around still trying to have to figure out how to make a living. And I Oliver's a racist? Assuming that I'm fucking rich. I got people, oh, you're on TV. You're fucking rich. No, fuck you. I'm not rich. You go fuck yourself with that shit. Oliver's a racist. You didn't? Come on. I know. Yeah, of course so, I know. I did want to talk party? to you about that, though. You always knew uh, that there was a black joke coming. Anytime I, Oliver, you'd be standing there, Oliver, at the after party, and he would look around. When he looks in all directions, you know he's about to say something fucked up. Dude, they never hung out with me at the after party. <laughs> at oh, all. Well, I mean, I wasn't, <laughs> but certainly not I, I after season four. I wasn't among the favorites, I can tell you that right now, but I would be in the group. And he'd be I telling black that. jokes, huh? It happened once or twice, yeah. <laughs> See, the first time I'd met Ali on the show, I'd met him years prior, but barely met him, you know, just seen him at a convention. But uh, 
when the first time we met him on a show, I'm there with Made Rich and uh, a few other. I, I say Made Rich because Made Rich was kind of religious. He's not really, really religious, but he's religious enough that when yeah. somebody holds up their phone and the and the the thing is just flashing, fuck Jesus, fuck Jesus, that he's he's like, I ain't cool with that. Like that's what he said. He says, Man, I ain't cool with that. And when I see it, I was like, okay, I get it. I'm not the biggest religion. It doesn't bother me, but it does pause like this is the guy that's going to judge us right right and he's already like what is he doing that for why is he why is he doing that he had yeah. it way up over his head so that we as contestants could all see it and it just kept saying fuck jesus fuck jesus like it was just the the word fuck and then the word jesus would flash on his phone like you had to have an app to even do that like he he had to put some work into this right yeah how did you make that <laughs> and, and like, and why? And then why are you holding it up? And we're all just meeting you for the first time. Like, yeah. what? What's the deal here? That being said, I like Dolly. I I didn't I really know Dolly. he was such a I racist. Him. Most of the time, he was really nice. But also, you know, I'm not black. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That that that's a new. I, I wondered, like, do you? I feel like his racism isn't so racist as it is bigoted and uh, ignorantly racist. It's, it's got that same. It's got that same smell on it that he's got with that whole elite tattoo artist thing. Like that that fucking boys club of tattoo artists that like they think they're like the tattoo mafia. You know, it's got that yes. same like elitist fucking feel to it. You know what I'm saying? It's funny to to consider him uh, an elitist, but I do see what you're saying. I don't yeah, think you're it's wrong. It's not elitist in the way that we normally think of it, like the fucking Rothschilds. I mean, like, a different way, but still just as sinister. Right, yeah, but still, like, you, you have to be accepted, and certain things will keep you right. up. Right, which means that you have to automatically, anytime that's the case, you know, people are judging you based on certain things. That means that if you don't act a certain way, if you don't fall in line... You're not good with them. That's the same thing as fucking fascism and everything else. Like, take right. that and fucking go fuck yourself with it. You're never going to get me in on that. Well, certainly when you hold fuck Jesus up like he did, then yeah. as a Christian, you yeah. would be like, should I yeah. not mention but that's, my but faith? That's to show you right there. Like, maybe that doesn't offend me, and maybe that doesn't offend you. But you offend somebody it is designed to offend someone. Yeah, that's yeah. the point. It's, the point is, is that it was designed. Yeah, it was designed to piss somebody off so that he could laugh at somebody being upset. That shows you everything you need to know. It was similar to his MySpace page. Well, the MySpace page <laughs> was fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> right. The, the well, one, nine years in a row, he dressed up in. We, I, let me let me first let me, let me uh, just for anybody listening explain that for nine years in a row I believe it was every Halloween Oliver dressed up in blackface from characters like Kobe Bryant after the rape trial um, to uh, Super Negro I yeah, believe it was, was the a, one that a was character like from Eddie Murphy at, that was the hardest yeah. one to look at the yellow leotard yes. with the red end on the front I was like oh my god yeah <laughs> yeah and the the buck teeth the afro. All of that, yeah. But uh, and, and to see how proud he is of it, I'm so proud yeah, he would take thing, pictures. Like, he couldn't be fucking smiling any bigger in those pictures. No, he uh, he's, he's pretty it. happy. Yeah, and so he's happy to be pissing people off or making yeah. them say same yeah. as he was happy. But that's what I was saying about the fuck Jesus thing. Like he knows he's going to upset somebody. That's the goal. That's who he is. Right. That's what he wants. Right. Right. That's why, why he does he Ramon did. songs in yeah. drag. Yeah. Yeah. It's just you know. It's going to make somebody mad. Right. They're going to say, why are you, why are you wearing a dress? Just so I can. And then as far as the other one goes, like, I still can't remember how. I, I, I remember when we got there, right? And I'm like, how the fuck do I know New Year's? How the fuck do I know New Year's? Like, I know this guy. I know his face. Where do I know him from? And somebody said Miami Inc. And I instantly remembered. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my fucking God. This is the guy that used to get too drunk and not even show up for his appointments. Like, they would have to go to his house and drag this motherfucker out of bed, and then he would get to work and do some fucked up shitty looking tattoo and get yelled at. This is the guy judging me? Hey, oh, shit. Talk about remember, no fucking standards. Remember what, it, like, when we were going back and forth with words on the day that me and Nunez fought, he he called me a bitch, and then I knew that I was going to get under his skin. I said, 
he said that I was awful. I said, whatever. This is what people don't know. Right before the very last thing I said to him was, whatever. There are six seasons of Miami Inc. that prove just what a shitty tattoo artist you are. And at yeah. that moment, that's when he said, come at me, bro. Yeah. But honestly, I wish they would have left that part in. Cause that was fucking <laughs> he called him out so good. Dude, I met my editor. We all had an editor. And uh, she, I seen her at the after party. I didn't get to hang out with, I didn't meet Nunez. I didn't meet Ali. I didn't meet Navarro. I don't know how those guys stayed so far away from me at the after party, but I didn't they see them at all. They themselves. You have to know where to look for them if you want to see right. them. They always well, do that. And my wife was hoping to meet these, you know, stars. Uh, but I didn't give a fuck because I'd already spent enough time with them. Yeah. Uh, but my editor came up to me and my wife, who is never jealous, she had to come up and stand next to me because she was like, this bitch is trying to fuck my old man or something. Like, she's hard about it. But the thing really? was that. Andy got jealous? That doesn't usually happen at all. No, not at all. She'll she'll sit back in the cut and be like, oh, Kyle's about to make a tip off these two girls who are Dude, flirting I've with seen, her. I've seen her stand there and just laugh when girls are flirting with you. I can, oh, she thinks it's funny. <laughs> she knows a lot of girls put their titties on me when I'm taking a picture with them. They just, like, it's just like the stance or something. And I guess it's lie. the thing they do. Lie. They, I love that move. I don't care. I, like <laughs> I, I, I don't hate move. it. I don't I hate it care. at all. Yeah. I do love that my wife is able to see it. And, like, I would be pissed off if every time a guy took a picture of my wife, he put his ball sack on her in some way. Be like, I mean, well, you know. dude, slow your roll, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But Candy, Candy's good about it. She'll see that, and she'll be like, ah, whatever. Don't hurt her. Um, but she got nervous, or not nervous. I shouldn't use that word. But she came over, you know, it was like, the first time I seen a tinge of jealousy in her almost ever because this editor had spent so much time trying to fight for the things that got put in, you know, on my behalf. Right. So she was just like you say, you're like, well, why? I don't know why they didn't leave that in, but you know that they couldn't because you can't portray the icon Nunez as right. the shitty tattoo artist that he actually is, or they don't have a show. They have too much money invested in that guy being recognizable. Nobody even cares why he's recognizable. It's right. Just because yeah. People know him and he was on a tattoo show, so that must make him an authority. Like, people even now, have... to this day, to this day, you look at any tattoo that he just did, there's not a clean line to be found. My tattoo blows out lines like it's his fucking job. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've never seen anything he, like it in my life. He's not the best. No, that, that's your, not that's the your best. opinion. He's, but the problem is, is that, like, I know what a clean line looks like. You know what a clean line looks like. Everybody that's ever done a good tattoo knows what a clean line looks like. And you're judging clean lines, so why can't you make one? <laughs> right. You know? Like, if you're going to give me shit, you better be fucking on your game. Didn't he get tattooed when we were when you were there? Was that the first season? You no, got no, tattooed was, by they somebody. They never got tattooed near us. Okay, so he got he got some panther or something on his thigh, and it had this huge blown out line by one of the guest judges that showed up, and it was just like they showed it off, and everybody looked at it, it was like, just yeah, what shut up. Here? Yeah, nobody said anything. No, we all just were like, la di da, la di. Oh, I know? wish I would have been there because I would have been like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> right. Why the fuck are you here, man? How are you gonna judge us if you do shit like that? Yeah. yeah. I would have said it in a way where they couldn't even edit it out because it's just TV gold. Oh, we didn't get to see it on camera. Oh. There was no no cameras oh. present when, when he showed oh, off the tattoo no. that, the, that the guest judge had done. Dude, when I did the New England convention last year, he was there. And I'm not even going to put everything else out there. I mean, I could say some shit, but whatever. But uh, <laughs> he, was, he was there, you know, being his usual self. I know that you know what that means. And then... Um, you know, he did a tattoo, and he was tattooing in the same booth as Bob Tyrell. Now, oh God, Bob Tyrell, like that dude can tattoo his fucking ass off. I love Bob Tyrell. I love Bob Tyrell's work. He's a good person. He's a good dude. He's a good artist. I got nothing good bad to say about him, but he's fucking he's a great guitarist too. That's right. But you know. <laughs> He's in the booth with Nunez. I went over there to look at what he was doing, and I was tattooing all day, so I didn't have a lot of time. I went over there quick. I did a shot with Bob. I was like, good fucking thanks, man. Thanks for the whiskey. I see what Nunez is working on. He wasn't, you know, he's like leaning over. I couldn't get near it, right? 
So yeah. I'm, like, I'm going back to see this thing when it's done. So he, he covered up his homework? That I was coming back to look at it, and when I got back there, he was gone. Like, he finished that tattoo, wrapped it up, and got off the floor so quick. So <laughs> It was did, did you ridiculous. ever see it? No, I never got to see it. I heard, I heard some things. People said some things about it. <laughs> you <laughs> thought. Let's just say people were talking. They were aware of the event, <laughs> but I didn't see it with my own eyes, so I can't tell you. So what's that? Uh, Steve Teff's show out there with yes, uh, Tommy it's, Supply it's, Company it's, in Connecticut. It's, it's the New England Tattoo uh, Show. It's actually coming up again in. Um, Oh man, I can't remember if it's March or April. I think it's the beginning of April, but it's Steve. Steve, everyone knows Steve Tefts. He was on. Uh, he won season two, and then they brought him back on season eleven, or something like that. He was a coach. Yeah. But Steve's a good friend of mine, and um, he throws the convention, and his convention went off so fucking good. I can't wait to do it again. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I didn't get to do it. Check I, it I out think if you're not on it already. Well, I think we we got a Villain Arts one that weekend, and I kind of we we do the Villain Arts because they take such good care of us, you know. See, so now, if write, there's that to do. I write for Villain Arts. I love Villain Arts. I've been doing Villain Arts shows since 2001, I believe. Um, but that last one in Philly, it caused me not to do the next one that's coming up in Philly. Why? The rules, the new rules, the uh -oh. way it was, dude. I wasn't even allowed. I wasn't allowed to eat. I wasn't yeah. allowed to fucking do anything. I wasn't allowed to walk or bring it. I bought those cups, you know, the root beer, the metal cups, where, like, you fill them up and you keep the cup. They wouldn't yeah. let me walk out of the food area with it. So I'm like, well, what the fuck? I just paid well, $30 fucking dollars for cups when I can't even fucking carry them around? Like, fuck you. So then, right. So, and then other people started having problems with it. My biggest thing was I'm, I'm a tattoo artist. You know, we specialize in fucking knowing how to not cross-contaminate things. We have, we're all licensed in not cross-contaminating our areas and our workspaces and our stuff. You're going to treat us like every other Joe nobody who doesn't know dick. So now I have to go to work. Because when we go to a convention, we're going to work. I have to show up to work. It takes me an hour to get inside because I got morons that are less qualified than the security guards at the fucking TSA. <laughs> Going through my bag looking for contraband. You know what I'm saying? You I do. Fuck you, dude. I and as long as those regulations are in place and they're trying to do all that stuff, I'm not like yeah. villain art seems to be going right along with all that. Like, let's just make everything stupid with the masks and the vax and the whole bit. Like, well, he's he's following whatever over. city he has to go to because here, here's proof that uh, that they're only doing what's required. Uh, I caught COVID in Minneapolis. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just now back to being what's ever on the normal, or yeah, you know, but, or, or being free. But I didn't get hurt by it. But I was vaccinated, so I think that that might have had something to do with you know so doing even, good. I, I honestly, I, the whole thing with the vaccination and stuff. This is my stance on it. Ready? Do whatever uh -oh. you want to do. Do whatever you want to do. Everybody. The, my, my whole thing is freedom. Okay? Freedom. We live in America. This place was built so that nobody <laughs> could be mandated to do a fucking thing. So anybody well, who's you gotta asking pay taxes. for anything, anybody who's asking for anything to be mandated, anything. It could be mandatory taxes. you got to wear fucking shoes to walk in the store. Anything right. that's mandatory is un-American. Because a mandate means you no longer have the freedom to do it your way. You have well, to do it the way you're told. Let me give you... You Let me give you history. You a little history on that. Other. Let me give you a little history on the mandate. Uh -oh. One of the first mandates inside of the country was that every landowner had to have a gun. Okay. But again, I disagree with that too. <laughs> okay, right on. I don't have to have shit. I might be making that up too. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. But a man, this, this, the, the essence of a mandate is mm -hmm. someone else telling you what to do. The whole point of being an American freedom is that nobody can tell you what to do. You do what you want to do. Right. As long as you're not hurting anybody else, it doesn't matter. Well, now, therein, if you are spreading a disease that could hurt somebody. Okay. But you do know that the CDC just came out today and said that your natural immunity is like four times stronger than the vaccine, right? Like, they're going back on everything they said. The official narrative is completely crumbling. And Project Veritas just exposed 
a whole bunch of stuff. If you don't know who they are, you need to go find out. Project Veritas. Oh, I'm well familiar with them, but I don't trust them too much. Yeah, a bit of an idiot. Well, here's here's the thing, though. You know. Yeah. Sometimes it takes it. They're trying to talk about the stuff like, like all the bullshit. Right. The fact of the matter is, okay, nobody, nobody would believe that you didn't have bad intentions if you you had the, the companies that made these drugs. One of them, who is the large, the owner of the largest criminal fine in history, Pfizer, right? They wouldn't even distribute this thing until the government assured them that there would be absolutely no recourse for anybody to sue them or for them to go to jail. They wouldn't. Well, do that was that was part of the warp speed, immunity. right? They so I understand. They wouldn't do it until they guaranteed immunity. Guaranteed immunity right. from that. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I don't know. But I, I, yeah, no, I have I heard that that was part of the Operation Warp Speed. That's actually what yeah. allowed us to get the, the vaccine sooner, right. as it were. So Am now, I wrong? What about all the stuff that's wrong with it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. What's wrong with it? Am I going to die? That's my question. Well, I mean, Am I going to die? die? But, right, but I got the vaccine. So right. am I going to yeah. die? Yeah, you might be on a fast track. <laughs> Fuck. But I'll tell I, you. I can tell you this, bro. I would, if they you, tell if me it's, me it's for somebody's shot, benefit, then then where am I going? Shot or shot in the head with a bullet? Mm-hmm. I'll take the bullet. Nah. Yes. 100%. Why? Why? That's a stupid choice. The only thing I need to know is that I'm being lied to about what's in it and what it really does. The so because you know you to the truth. You, people because that are vaccinated you, are spreading it more than people that aren't. People oh, that that's are not true. Are getting sick. Yes, they are. They just not that's not it. true. That's yes, not true. Yes, that's yes, not yes. true. That's yes. not true. This is why I didn't want to get into this. Why, 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 do we, uh, why do we believe that? I don't know that, that but I know that that's not true. Uh, right. the, the unvaccinated people are spreading it more than vaccinated people. Like, uh, I, I caught it from an unvaccinated person, I'm pretty sure. I, I know the person buddy, who had it. it. My buddy got uh-huh. it from his vaccinated grandfather. Okay. Um, I have two friends that caught it from their vaccinated parents. Um, and the people that caught it that weren't vaccinated, they were okay in about a week. The people that caught it after getting vaccinated were sick for months. What about our friend James Vaughn? James Vaughn almost died because you can't get sick with, like, a fucking disease when you don't take care of yourself. Anybody that doesn't take care of themselves is going to get fucked up by a fucking... You can get fucked up by the common cold if you don't fucking take care of yourself. Will the vaccine make someone like James, who doesn't take care of himself by your standard, do better with the with COVID than he did? I haven't seen any proof of that. Do you, have you seen any evidence contrary? Yeah. Yeah, but that's only because I keep reading up on it. I keep looking for it. <laughs> Right on. See, I keep seeing the stuff that disproves um, people who make claims like you did, the more vaccinated are spreading it than well, the unvaccinated. Know, like, there's also a lot, of, a lot of people talking about how it's, you know, they're trying to weaponize it. The vaccine? Yeah. To do what? First of all, it's an attack on the poor. They just did an expose about people in poor neighborhoods because they give you free $100 gift cards to get vaccinated. There are people that ran around to, like, a bunch of different doctors picking up fucking, vac- like, free cards of, you know, $100 gift cards for getting vaccinated, like, five fucking times under different names and shit. Um, and that's Can I tell you what? on people's lack of intelligence and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the most intelligent person. You know me. Now, no, but no, let me right. tell you... Hold on. Let I me tell, tell you. I'm going to take a bong hit. Just, if you hear something <laughs> weird, that's what that is. As as I consider though the vaccine to take it or not, I find a lot of the opinions come down to how much you trust politicians, or how much you trust the government who's being controlled by politicians. My answer and if, is not at all. Never. An interest to me. If me that water is wet, I will question it. Donald Trump's administration told me that the vaccine was good. And as they said that, the Democrat administration, Camilla Harris at least, said she had serious doubts as to whether she would take it because of Donald Trump saying it. To which I thought, well, that's stupid. And then fast forward a couple of months, and the same, uh, the, it was her saying that the vaccine was good. 
even though she stood opposed to it simply because of the affiliation it had with the Trump administration. So yeah, to me, they don't want to like agree with each other. Like the second he says something's good, it's automatically bad. So right, but they did. Polarizing. But they did but agree they with each other to make it bad. So what I saw was that they both agreed with each other just at different points in times, and that there was little change in the actual product. There was zero change to the actual product that they disagreed about, except for their political position. And so that led me to believe that I'm okay. They ain't trying to kill me with no vaccine because both of these stupid political people were both for and both against it at different times. Now, I'm going to go a step beyond that. You said political people. Yeah. But you're not thinking about something. Uh Uh-oh. What what is a politician? Inherently, a politician politician is a puppet. Because you never know what he's really saying. The words coming out of a politician's mouth are never their own words. It's the words the words that were written for them by the people that own them. Yeah, I, I don't that. disagree. Okay. Yes, that's that's so, what's got uh, the last two Supreme Court justices. So who onto owns, the Supreme Court justice so who, was not. So who I owns mean, every politician? Uh, money. Um, you know, right. lobbyists. No, 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 you're not wrong. That's the answer. Money. Who owns money? A whole lot of different people. No, you're wrong about that. There's really Just only one person? family that owns money. The Rothschilds. They own the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is not federal. It is a privately owned bank. That family owns that bank. They also own the World Bank. When I feel Google like I'm it, descending down a word hole. Word yeah, hole. Dude, when, you, when you Google it, it'll say they're worth about $400 billion, When in no, actuality, I, I, that family is worth over $500 trillion. I, I don't doubt that they're very rich. I understand that they also had something to do with Exxon. Am I wrong? Yeah, but you, that's not the thing. They're not rich. Rich people are rich. They they invented and own money, and then they made the rest of the world need it. Without so, money, there's no control over all these other places. That's why the like, Rothschilds were once taxed at ninety three percent their income. They what? Say the again? Rothschilds at one point in history, the Rothschilds were taxed at ninety three percent of their income. Taxed by who? The the U.S. government taxed them ninety three percent of their income. That first of all, that's that's not even true. When was that? Was it before? Whoa, the whoa, whoa! Was well, let's not jump on whether it's true. Just because you know I make stuff up doesn't mean you know that this is true or not. <laughs> right. no, no, yeah, I do believe. That, no, that's an argument that they use against uh, certain taxing and and how they show that after that. It became important for rich people to control uh, the the government, right. so well, they could control how much they were attacked. Hijacked the fucking school and the education and the healthcare systems, which is why everybody was taken off of homeopathic medicine and put onto allegoric medicine, so that they could monetize your health. So now your health is literally being held hostage by people who aren't going to make you better. They're not curing anything. Curing people doesn't make new customers. Side effects See, make new customers. Now, now I just realized. I, I might have completely superimposed the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. I don't know. The rich people with the R's in their names. It doesn't really matter because they're all in the same club. Perhaps. Yeah. I imagine they're all pretty gre- – I don't think the club's as, as tight-knit as everybody thinks. I think it's a lot of backbiting in that club. I think you have to understand that those people don't need to like each other to be smart enough to work together. Okay. Yeah. I can understand they don't that. Need to or, like each or, I don't think they go needs. on vacation and fucking rub sun la- suntan lotion on each other's back. No. I think they fucking probably despise it, each other. But is that what you do for your people. friends? Is that what you do for your friends? It depends. It depends. If I've been on the beach with you, man. You never rub no lotion on my back. No. No. <laughs> I, offered, I offered candy several times, but she told me to get away. Uh, being crazy. <laughs> right on. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, um, I don't know. I do know, for, for as far as the vaccine goes for me, if I have the opportunity, like, I know I'm going to die just like you do. And if I have the opportunity to do something that even if I'm wrong, I thought had the intention of helping people weaker than me, then I feel like it's not necessarily my patriotic duty, but it's my happy patriotic sacrifice. All right. So be it. You, know? See, you have the freedom to do that. I'm all about freedom. 
Me? Have you have you known anybody that died from the vaccine or the or not uh, the vaccine? But the, I've uh, the... a ton of stories about people having bad effects, and I tattooed um, yeah. a nurse and I tattooed a doctor, and they both said that the shit that's going on and the shit that's being reported are not they don't match. Right. I've had a friend who died um, from the from from the vaccine. His father died, I should say. He's a tattoo artist in town. His dad died after getting the vaccine, but they believe that he had COVID when he got it as well as when he got the vaccine and perhaps yeah. should have took a test, I guess. But they're not doing tests before you get the vaccine. So it's kind of weird that they that, that could be a thing and that wouldn't be known about. Um, and then I have had a friend die from COVID itself, not from the vaccine, from COVID. I've had two friends go into comas and their lives have not, you know, drastically changed after COVID um, for for the worse. So I've seen a little on both sides. And yeah. as far as as far as I'm seeing the numbers, it seems to me to not be this bad thing. But for that's I mean, for me. I've got the freedom. I, you know, I believe that they're not going to try and kill the sheep. They're going to kill the sheep that get out of the box. You know, like you if I'm start, standing nah, there in a line. Start looking up some other stuff, dude, because there's a bunch of rumblings right now about, like, billionaires talking about how they go to these, like, events with other billionaires, and they're all talking jokes about how they're going to wipe out two-thirds of the dumb people, and the dumb people is us. Right, but how are you going to wipe out the dumb people? Are you, okay, you going to wipe on, them out? Well, wait, uh, well, wait, well we got it. Uh-huh. Let me ask you this. You believe that if you follow the money, you get to the truth? Uh, no, not necessarily truth, but I will say that you get I, I to the motive. If you want to find the truth, you just follow the money, and the money will okay. tell you what the what? truth is. So who's one of the majority owners of Pfizer, I think the majority stockholding owner of Pfizer is the Rockefeller family. They okay. are also not only the owner of Pfizer, who is the owner of the largest criminal fine in history, but... They are also tens of billions invested in eugenics. Now, you don't see a link there? You know, I don't, you know I'm not a smart kid, so what's a eugenic? Eugenics is wiping out major amounts of people at once. It's euthanization. It's fucking depopulation. How, how do you get in, invested in eugenics? You, what study, is the, you study ways to eradicate the population, to systematically... No, but you say they're invested. A ...or a population of human beings. But their their through money is invested? Through genetics, through fucking mutations, through all kinds of shit. There's a million different ways. They're looking at all of them. That's why it takes so much fucking money. How are they invested in it? Like they spend well, money cool. trying to figure out how to kill people. Yes, that's exactly what that means. In the most systematic and efficient ways, yes. Like I don't know, poison in the food supply with like fucking. Did they did I they, mean? they put lead in my water? Different. You know I'm out here in Flint. Did they put lead in my water? First motherfuckers. Of all, I, I, from what I understand, the water in Flint is flammable. No, it's not. Not anymore. Never was. They didn't frack the, the backyard yet. No, that is uh, up north. Um, in Michigan, where I, that is a possibility, it's going on there. I've seen it in I don't PA. Know, I saw a fucking TV show where they had flammable water, and I couldn't fucking yeah. believe fire coming. It out wasn't Flint. Yeah, it was in a on a show called Gasland, right? Something like that. Yeah, they fracked the yeah. whole place, and now they yep. have water, yeah. and gas in the water Bunch lines, and yeah, fucking Rockefeller showers, and their skin is like fucking freaking out and rotting off and stuff. Yeah, killing cows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I recall. Yeah, I watched great. it. Right after I saw that documentary, I went to Texas, and I, I happened to be at a tattoo convention that was sharing the the area with um a gas convention. And so oh there's a bunch God, of guys dude. in the bar. Yeah, there's a bunch of guys in the bar that represent the gas company. And so I was like, I told them, I was like, hey, I just got done watching Gasland. And then they gave me a bunch of counterpoints. Oh and uh, and they did the Fahrenheit 911 to my Fahrenheit 911, I guess. Right. If there is such a thing, if you watch both, um, I tried. They're they're both stupid, but <laughs> uh, this is kind of where I feel every like it. To me, there's just a pay grade that it's not that it's stupid. It's stupid for me to worry about. You know, mm -hmm. like, like I'm just not, and 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 that's where I'm at with the vaccine. Like me to worry about it more than this or that seems stupid. 
But when I do think about it, I if I was the government, I would try to kill off the people who didn't follow in line. Well, yeah. I wouldn't try to kill off the people who did what I told them to. Right, but it's I think it's key wording, how I've heard it more than once, the phrase two-thirds of the dumb people. And what mm-hmm. do dumb people do inherently? They do what they're fucking told. Do they? Yeah. That seems like yeah. that seems like a smart thing. No, dumb people are fucking easily led, bro. Smart people are like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. I ain't doing that. So why are they trying to keep the smart people then? Like it doesn't seem smart to keep smart I people. I don't have it seems... all the answers. If I did, I would be fucking putting them out there, but I don't. I wish I did. Let, let me I'm ask you this: I'm trying to put it together just like you, man. Trying Isn't to it easy? The world, bro. Isn't it easier to control the stupid people than it is to control the smart people? I don't know if you've noticed, but the stupid people are controlled. They say everything okay. they're supposed to say when they're supposed to say it in defense of their system. But then like, your argument Smith, kind of defeats it. Whenever it's in danger and they fucking defend it. You follow how my ar- your argument kind of goes against itself then? Where? Well, you're saying that they're trying to kill off two-thirds of the dumb people, Right. And you're saying the dumb people do whatever they're told. The dumb people are the ones that, like, listen, you needed the world built. You know what I'm but, saying? But, the world but you built. don't. It's built. <laughs> it's made now. But, you don't need all the servants anymore. You don't need all the people to, to dig the ditches. The ditches are dug. So you want smart people left over, but the smart people don't do what you ask them to do. It, you you no, say but, it's easier to make money off of dumb people than it is to make right, money off of smart people. So why would I try to system. kill... I think there's a new system coming. That's what I'm trying to say. It's going to make more money. Well, in that need then... Money anymore. Money's not even going to be a thing. They're going to get it down to complete totalitarianism where you just do what you fucking told or else. Or else they kill you. <laughs> no. Well, I but, don't know. But, like I said, I don't know. And I just took a bomb hit before, so now I'm all off fucking court. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out where the dumb in the spot, because to me it seems like it's eating itself a bit. Like, it's like it's harder to control smart people. You And you but, can't make no, as much no, money off of a smart person. Critically thinking people can't be controlled. And if they can't be controlled, I can't make as much money off. Right, but once you get rid of all the unnecessaries, you don't need to control anybody anymore. But I can't make money off them, and my my ultimate goal is it's to make not more money. There's going to be a need for money. Money is control. You won't need control. Once all the people are out of the way, and there's an there's an abundance for whatever's left. But that anyway, only means. But that only means they'd be killing the smart man, people. Like I said, I don't know all of the all the answers. I'm trying to figure them out just like you. But they would only be killing the smart people then. If once you get, I'm um, okay. You know what? You know, now, this now is one of those things. Yourself. Now you just spun yourself in a circle. Dude, I started in a circle. Come on. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I, I only I, I take the vaccine because somebody smarter than me said take the vaccine, and I felt like if it helps somebody weaker than me, then I can't feel bad even if I die. But what if you were only strong before you had it? Like, I don't know. I, I never got it, and I also never got the, the I never had COVID or anything. I mean, fucking this whole time. My girl had it twice. We were in the same house. I didn't get it. Are you yeah, sure you didn't get it and just weren't asymptomatic? I mean, is, is there such a thing as having nothing wrong with you and being absolutely fine and also no one around you gets sick, but you still had it? Because maybe. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's thing, a smart maybe, guy. But otherwise, no, I didn't have it. Right on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't I, I don't know. You're saying that you probably would have infected somebody had, else yeah, I had if no you were asymptomatic. And nobody that was around me with no symptoms ever came back and was like, oh, all of a sudden I'm sick. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that didn't happen. So Our, I think we've been talking about the vaccine for at least 23 minutes now. So change the subject to something else. Didn't you have other questions written down? No, I, I love the I love the vaccine one, man. <laughs> You're just trying to get rated, you fucker. All right. You so, <laughs> oh, do you think no? That that would get me canceled. Come on, uh, you know, what? even having a, having an opinion about the vaccine gets you canceled, don't it? You better be careful because Neil Young won't want his music on your station anymore. It's a, although I <laughs> I also am vaccinated, Neil Young and then somebody else. I've never liked his music. music. And the second one, I'm like, who the fuck is that? I never even heard of that one. No, I haven't heard. I, I I did know that. Uh, yeah, they were like sp- no no Joe Rogan or um, 
Sure or Kyle Dunbar. Like, Neil Young's like, I'm going to pull my song. Like, your songs suck. You weren't even good back when you were good. Get out of here. <laughs> Keep on rocking in the free world. And then he wants to fucking tell everybody else what to do. Go fuck yourself, you fucking hypocrite. Old ass hypocrite. Is that ageism? Am I not allowed to say that? I don't know. I don't know. You you know you're allowed to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. No, but I'm serious. You have to, who can't, you have who to take the fuck about Neil Young right now? Do you care about Neil Young? Well, I'll tell you who cares about Neil Young. Alive. I didn't even know he was still alive. I thought the fucking guy was dead. <laughs> We're talking about him right now. So, I was talking about him because of Joe Rogan, though. Yes, but like, that's the way that works. That, I think, I, honestly, I think Neil Young just did this to make himself relevant again. You're there like, you go. How else can I get people to listen to my music? It's so old and nobody gives a shit. Maybe I'll make one of somebody relevant. And then he goes after Joe Rogan. Like cannabis to Eminem. Yeah. And I would yeah. say I would say ICP to Eminem, but fuck that. I ain't doing that shit because ICP fucking stands alone. Dude, they are they're their own breed of people. You can definitely say that they do stand alone. <laughs> but I they think do they stand, stand alone because nobody wants to stand next to them. They yeah, but that's, like, been close but to that's, that's <laughs> you've noticed that too, huh? I have noticed that there is an aroma about the juggalo that comes with it that you need to be ready for. I think I'm, fucking, I think I've got that aroma myself yeah, right now. You stand too close to a juggalo, like all of a sudden you start to taste it on the roof of your mouth. It's disgusting. You did you? Did you? There. Could you tell when we when they put us in line next to each other? Then your fucking your tattoo gives it away pretty fast. Right, I didn't know if you could taste it in your mouth, though. But no, no, no. <laughs> like, you weren't that offensive. You were, you were pretty good on the hygiene front, as far as the juggalo goes. I mean, not as yeah, far they as were the regular person, but as far as the juggalo goes, you're pretty clean. I do have to admit, <laughs> but you know, juggalos are like Christians. Okay, hear me out here. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say, how does that work? Well, as like far this, as I know, the like people juggalos believe and actually exist. Okay, oh, <laughs> yeah. that was a slam. This is a good one. <laughs> So Christians, generally, bunch of idiots. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Okay, and they, they, by being such, in connotation or in thought, they almost ruin Christianity, which in itself is not such a bad thing. I mean, it's a nice story. We'll put it that way. Okay, not such a bad thing, though. If you're a Christian, you believe in doing good for people so that you can see good. You're not, even if you are yeah. completely wrong, you're not makes going the wrong way. way. Makes a halfway entertaining story, you know. A what? You say it, it right in the mic. Makes a halfway entertaining story. Okay, yes. Now, ICP is an awesome group full of great things. Like, lordy, lordy, we got to protest that man. Some rock and roll ninja bit the head off a rat. Let's march in his concert and send him to hell because he's so fucking terrible. Meanwhile, his album sold double and triple because you heard about him rubbing his nipple. So, anyways, yeah, but they never they bring sold in, Eminem, and they tried to fuck with him, and he slayed them. Actually, uh, they've kind of teamed up, and they've buried the hatchet long before proof of death. <laughs> buried the hatchet. I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, you like that? I see what you did, you slick son of a bitch. <laughs> At any rate, so they bring us golden like that, but yet the juggalos yeah. bring the connotation down. So many people don't even know about ICP. They just don't like them because there are these juggalos that exist. But many people don't know about Christ, except that there are these Christians that exist that make Christ seem less appealing. Right. So that's how I say they're the same. That's like the same way I feel about the Yankees. Like, I don't hate the Yankees so much, but Yankee fans are fucking insufferable. <laughs> okay, yes. You know I, I mean? probably should have used that as an analogy. Yeah. Like, you know, Yankee fans, they're like juggalos. The best is when they're like, oh, yeah, we won. Like, you're not on the team. You didn't do shit. They did. And they're rich. Hey, they're not rich. That's an observation I've made forever. Yeah. I, like they when the someone hat, tells they me their the team thing, lost, like, we won. We the won. Fo you didn't the foam finger. Shit. Well, if anybody tells me they lost, I always, I quick go to like, well, did you wear the jersey? Were yeah. you at the game? Like, what did you do wrong? You, your team, right. they'll say, oh, they, they lost. You ever notice that, too? Actually, I should say, the yeah, team. they lost. We won, they lost. We won, they lost. They lost. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I blame it on them. I'm like, you probably were pulling your end. 
You know, yeah. did you wear the fucking thing? Did you do the funny little dance that you do all the time? And then they'll be like, what are you talking about, funny little dance? I'm like, you don't have a sacred dance that you do to make them win games? And they're like, of course I don't. That's stupid. And then I'm like, you don't even have a fucking sacred dance? Yeah, of course they lost. What kind of super yes. fan are you? No dance? Not one. No ritual? Yeah. No special yeah. outfit? Now we you know, know why. I mean? It's a quiet anything? bus ride home. you make home. anybody a sandwich? Anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, send send them a dick pic. You know, no, maybe Humphrey. maybe that's what they're into. I mean, me now you get kicked out of school for that for contributing child porn, so you can't do that. Sending dick pics to people. You got kicked out of school? Time. No, no. For sending dick pics. Cool now, I'm saying I would. Can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. I think there was like a small window of like five years where you could just get away with that with no consequences, and then it just fucking closed. Now it's like, nope. Anything you send, you better be responsible for that shit. I don't even send a dick pic to my wife anymore because it's just too hard to set up. You got to, you know, the lighting, the and camera you angles. Is in the cloud. You can't, you can't hide from the cloud now. The cloud's no. got it. You send yeah, a dick to anybody, it's in the it. cloud. They're all looking at it. Well, Bill then, Gates then, is flicking his bean to your fucking dick pic. Because of that, then, I know that you're not worried about them tracking you through the vaccine. So you're not one of the people worried about the tracking device. I, that's... You, you're, we're speaking on my tracking device right now. I'm holding it in my fucking hand. Okay, right on. I, I, I do like the uh, imagination that some people have that it's a tracking device. Meanwhile, they, they'll be posting it on their tracking device. I'm not going to lie. I've heard conspiracy theories about nanobots. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. If I become a Manchurian candidate and just start taking people out, that's why I'm kind of telling you, and I'm I know that saying, you'll be I able to one the one. Like nanobots, it was like a thing I saw, and I'm like, you know, I don't credit anything until I see it from like a credible source. But there was this thing, and it was like, yeah, there's nanobots in the vaccine, and I'm like, oh my god, I, somebody's been watching Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want yeah. it, man. I've been reading comic books all my life, oh, so yeah. I'm waiting for it. I, I did kind of think maybe I'd be able to shoot webs after I got the vaccine. That would be fucking cool. See, then I would get it. <laughs> so that's I what they should just tell them. Done, then I would get it. Yeah, if I thought that it was going to make me a mutant, I would be right in line. All those high standards that you had a minute ago. Yeah, you know, I told somebody that if they're superpowers, now we're talking a different story. Now, I I could not have gone on the on the cruise that I went on if I wasn't vaccinated. Yeah, I mean, I'm good. I'll just stay on land. Yo, that cruise was awesome. I believe you. So but, much fun. But the price is too high. The vaccine. Yeah, it's too high. Too high price. Because I made some money while I was there, you know. That's that's great. It was actually the best money that I made in some time. I and I saw some of the most beautiful shit. good when I fold it and put it in my pocket. It's all the same. Right on. Right on. I told well, one I kid. Shop here he, anyway. you're right. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's just a, a bill right now. I know better. Yeah. If you're just no, starting no, no, it, no. I know. That's a headache. Something about, I built this place different. I did it my way I, and my whole crew. The only person that I got working for me that I didn't teach from the ground up is Angel yeah. from, you know, you know Angel Bowser, right? Season five. Yeah. Love him. Yeah, He's he, working with you? He works at my shop now. He puts up he, with you? He, he's the only one. you put one. up with him? Yeah, well, he, I love he him. closed his place down and then he needed a spot, so I gave him one. But it's not. Django. Like, yeah, Django. He does. He fucking. He's built so many. He did. A, he did a full Mandalorian with a goddamn. He turned a scooter into a fucking speeder. Put mirrors on the bottom. Yeah. Like it's floating. It's ridiculous. How much time does he put into that? Way more than he puts into anything else. <laughs> right on. I was curious. <laughs> I was curious if you see like you call him up, be like, hey, can you come in cover a shift? He's like, can't. Right now, I'm putting mirrors on the bottom of my scooter. Oh no, no, no! That's all like at night, and in the morning, he's in the basement doing that stuff. He's crazy, man. He builds that stuff out of like he can just find stuff and just build it into a suit. He built a full, eight, you know, H.R. Giger's Alien, right? You familiar the movie yeah. and all that stuff? Yeah. He built the full suit with the sound effects. And the fucking tail moves and everything. He built the whole fucking thing. Like he could easily <laughs> turn around and tell, sell that suit right now for ten grand. And he built well, it out of shit that he had laying around in his fucking basement. He gets people offering him money for him, right? He's told me he's been time. offered all the time. You know, and he, he doesn't. Sell. He doesn't sell. Him. Seems nope. like I would. I would think I would sell him. No, but I, think, but I, I think guess if you love him that much, it, I, I think if he turned it into a business, he wouldn't love it the way he does. 
Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Which then he just likes to dress fucking, up. But he's fucking good at it, dude. He's, I'm telling you, man. Like he's built some crazy shit. Who else is working with you out there? Anybody Everybody else I might know? I got Steph. Okay. Um, is my first tattoo artist that graduated from an apprentice. Steph Saboto. She's um, tattooing over a year now as a full tattoo artist. She does really nice fine line stuff. You know, beginning of the career, everybody's still in the fucking learning phase, but she's coming along real good. Right you know? On. And now she, oh, she manages her own clients and stuff. Like, she's, I don't have to worry about her. She can handle her own shit. And now I got a couple other ones. What kind of? Have I got you changed apprentice that's your... about to graduate soon. What? You changed your tattoo style at all since uh, Ink Masters? Have you changed much, or are you still doing the same know. stuff? I don't think I have a style. I don't, really don't. I'm not even kidding. Because every time I tattoo, it's different. I do realism. <laughs> I do fucking... If I freehand it, that's the only time that it's really... You know, like, if it just comes out of my head, that's the only time I really feel like I'm doing my style. But I do, I do a lot. And I, it's not... I don't know. I, I, I get bored real easy. I can't keep doing the same kind of tattoo over and over again. I fucking right. I catch myself spacing out. Like I just I get bored. I don't like it. But need a challenge. If I'm doing something different all the time. That's why I book myself. I'll book myself a, an equal amount of black and gray and color work. If you look on my page, you'll see it. Like I don't I don't stick to one thing ever. Even even my trophy case. All my trophies are in different fucking categories. You know, like I don't, I don't stick to one thing. I like doing a lot of fine line and realism, but I don't like doing only those things. You know, I do. I, the only, the only style I would say I don't really fuck with is Japanese, and that's just because I find it to be a little bit restricting. Like everything's always old, drawn the same way. You know what I mean? Uh, old like schools like that too, like though. The water, a tiger's drawn like a tiger. A fucking pee <laughs> right. like a pee. Like it's always the same. You know. So I'm like, yeah, it's, it's cool. I respect it, but I don't want to do it. But aren't aren't uh, traditional tattoos are the same then for you? I guess. Not, no, I mean, you probably I, don't I like them like as that much either. More leeway to it for some reason. Oh really? Yeah, right I don't know. The traditional style is easy to fuck with. You just, it's I don't know. The, the, the but Japanese if you fuck with it too much, thing, then it's neo traditional, right. right? Well, no, I like doing neo traditional too. I actually that's one of my favorites. Because, like, you can just do whatever the fuck you want, and you get to flex all different kinds of skills. Like, you get to use all different kind of line weights. You get to, like, draw something out that's, like, pretty cartoony and then do, like, really realistic color in it or, like, crazy fucking light and shading effects. Like, that's fun. I love doing that kind of stuff. Hey, who during Ink Master were you most impressed by as far as art? Art? Um, yeah, like, like if you thought, I mean, I don't think, I think you and I were around the same opinion. Yeah, Scott did well, great work, but we didn't see him winning or we didn't yeah, think yeah, he should have no. won. Well, like that one day, remember when Halo had the Wacom tablet and he's like, I wonder if I can just freehand paint Morgan Freeman. And then he sat there and fucking freehand, like drew Morgan Freeman on the goddamn screen. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> was I wasn't good. there that day. See, that's no, that's the way I felt about gone. Halo. I don't, know. I don't know where the hell you were. Well, yeah, I, I probably was, was. That was good. I mean, you know, you said it before. Halo fucking never stopped working on it. So if he wasn't impressive, uh, I'd be, I would be making fun of him. <laughs> have you seen his um? Have you seen his paintings as well? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He put a lot of work into that man. He took a bunch of classes. Like he really studied. Oh yeah. And he practices yeah. all the time. Like he's very. That's. I always said like if I had one word to describe Halo, it would be like. I think he's very calculated. I don't mean it in a bad way either. He's just very good at like budgeting his time, like managing. Right. You know, he's real organized and shit. Like he he manages to do that. That's where I struggle. For some reason, with I'm my with brain, you there. I can create all day long. You want me to write an email and talk about a schedule? I fucking jump out of the chair and start acting like a kid having a tantrum. I hate it. I fucking. Well, hate how it. how. How do you do this writing then? You do you you wrote that article and it was writing, extremely good. I felt. The, thank you. But the writing for me is just me. It's, I, I I write the way I speak. Like right. I just let it yes. come out, and then like, <laughs> yeah. you know you ask that's me what why I, I like tell you, and that's the end of it. That's what made it good, I believe, is because you're Thanks. like as you're reading it, you're like, oh, this is General J. This is yeah, not. I always, I always got that feel from Hunter S. Thompson. I felt like anything that guy wrote, you just knew he wrote it. 
You yeah. Know? Like his voice was in there. So that's something right. that I always respected. So I figured this like, if I'm going to write, I'm going to fucking sound like me. I'm just going to, I'm going to say it the way I fucking say it. And you're going to know it was me. There's no gonna, nobody going to put something out. And you're going to be like, Oh, was that Jay? Like, no, you'll know. You'll fucking know. You, know? you got any opinions on tattoo schools? Oh my God. I got a ton of opinions about that fucking bullshit. Um, it's the worst thing you can do if you want to be a real tattoo artist. Like it's a pyramid scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. You're not qualified when you leave there to work in a real tattoo shop. If you walk into my tattoo shop and you have a fucking a diploma or whatever the fuck they give you from a tattoo right. school, I will rip it up in front of you and headbutt your fucking teeth out of your face. Don't fucking come in and disrespect me with that bullshit. You're going to try to tell me that you learned in six weeks what it takes everybody else to really get comfortable. It takes years. You can go fuck yourself, you arrogant little piece of shit. Lucky I don't fucking piss on your fucking head after I set you on fire. You don't, you don't, you don't give them hell about wanting your job? I don't give a fuck about wanting my job. You're not qualified for my job, and now that you went about it this way, you'll never be qualified, ever. Right, right. Like I, I do, do feel. I didn't. I didn't mature. become a tattoo artist by accident. Like I wanted to do it. I got discouraged by a tattoo artist who said, "Like, oh, you don't want to do this job, man. It fucking sucks. You should just go get a real job." And then it took me like five years to get to find my way back to the business. But it was meant to happen because when it came back, it came back to me. Like it found me. I didn't find it the second time. You, know you didn't get an apprenticeship then. I got, <laughs> I got what you you know because you've been in the business a long time. I got um, a biker apprenticeship, which is okay. uh, yeah. So you will buy the very, shit you need to tattoo us. It's similar to like prospecting for a club, but also you do tattoos. It's it was right. it was a different world back then. Like you're talking about 1999, bro. Like there were no cameras everywhere. 9/11 hadn't happened yet. People weren't nervous. You could just talk like a normal person, and nobody got offended. It was a different place. This whole world was different. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I I'm agreeing. I want to make a TV show about it because nobody even knows. The fucking world is. It's not what you see now. Perhaps I, I like to think that the more things change, the more they stay the same. Um, so I always try to find the similarities, but I do see that there's differences from when I was a kid in tattooing, uh, to where I'm at now. Okay. And, and a, a, an amount of it is the schools that like, uh, the schools kind of, maybe they're that shortcut, but, but the first thing it, 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 it struck to me that you said that somebody discouraged you first. Cause I find that that seems to be the number one similarity between artists that learned most with no apprenticeship, yeah. you know what I mean? When, when they self taught of some sort, usually somebody pissed them off enough that they were like, you know what? But fuck you, dude, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Oh yeah. You don't think I can tattoo? Fuck you. Oh, cause you're so special. Cause only you can do it. Cause you're so cool. Yeah. Like yeah, I know guy, that's where I came from. This guy. And you know, him. it's a dude that I used to work for. He you he, he brought you into it. Yeah, I do. No, he you don't want to say his name. He probably. denied me an apprenticeship. He did my first tattoo. And I was talking about it. I was, I was 18. Oh my God! I didn't know that. I, I understood the. I understood how it went kind of down south after Ink Master, and after he was like, he seemed to be angry about the fame that you were getting. Yeah, he and did the, not like the, he was the I, I top the dog in the shop. He also didn't like that everybody came in and asked me if it was my place. Right. You know Sometimes I mean? those little things get under your under your skin if you're uh, not careful. Yeah. Sounds like I it mean, did him. I made a post recently going at him. I fixed up a tattoo he did on somebody. Like, he fell off. He sucks now. But he was good. He was I remember he was really good. That he was at one point. And he uh, he told me when I asked him for an apprenticeship, he was like, you don't want to do this fucking job, man. Like, go get yourself a real job. You'd be way better off. You don't want to be a tattoo artist. It fucking sucks. You know? And I was like, ah, all right. Well, I'm not going to find anything here. And then I wound up finding it through hanging out with like bikers and stuff, you know what I mean? It just sort of happened that way. But and then he looked you up years later to come work for him, or you went to talk to him and said, I "Hey, look where I'm at now." I, I actually just saw the shop. It wasn't a real popular place, and I was looking for a new job. I wandered in, and I see him, and I'm like, "Wait a minute, 
like, cause he looked different when he tattooed me. He was like a skinny little guy. And then when I see him, it's like almost 18 years later or something or 15 years <laughs> right. later. He had a big belly. His face was all fat. And I'm like, is that, is that you? And he was like, yeah, man. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit. And he hired me right away. He saw like he saw my Instagram. And he was like, "No shit, you became a tattoo artist." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." I went a little bit of a different route, but I did it. And he fucking he was like, "Yo, that's so cool." He gave me a job right off the bat. We were friends. Everything was cool. And then after the show, you know, yeah, things go funny. That's when it. Uh, that's when it really turned. People people seem to change. I don't know if, if if we don't change. I'm sure we change some, but it seems like people change a little bit. You know, around I you. I noticed that a lot of people that they they started making assumptions about me right away. You know what I mean? I got like, and people did, did people do this to you where they would like you go into a place like anywhere it doesn't matter. You go into a bar, or you go to like fucking you know Applebee's or wherever it doesn't matter where you're at, and they're all talking about like, oh look, he was on the show, he was on the show, and then later on you hear like, oh, all you ever talk about is the fucking show. <laughs> I was I'm just like, bitching I didn't about fucking that. bring it up. You, I didn't say it to anybody. You know what I mean? Like, I, was, I don't bring that shit up. I don't lead with that. Well, I do somewhat because other people can't. Does that make sense? It's like I know that Tom Brady talks. I don't know how many football trophies he's got, but if you said he only had one, he would remind you that he's got more. You know? Oh, yeah. And and I get it that I didn't win. <laughs> But I'm betting that the guy who's never won a Super Bowl, but he's been to the Super Bowl, I bet he fucking reminds people, too, when they start talking around him like, oh, blah, 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 like they know some shit. He's like, well, you know, take it from somebody who's fucking been there. Yeah. Oh, all you do is talk about the Super Bowl. That's all you ever – well, fuck you. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah I, no, I, 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 I guess I people – a lot of people, like, making it my fucking whole thing and then accusing me of doing that when I'm like, that's all you wanted to talk about. You wanted to tell everybody that you knew somebody from TV, and now all of a sudden I'm a fucking dick. Like, you go fuck yourself. You Jay know? from TV. Did did you get everybody imagine? I I got um pretty girl syndrome. I heard is what it's called. It's where you where you can never get a date because everybody thinks you're going to turn them down. Yeah. Or or yeah, you're yeah. too you're too high end. So people would be like, yeah, I'd love to get a tattoo from Kyle, but he's too expensive. See, I, like, I, I have been told on more price. than one occasion that I'm just kind of unapproachable. People are intimidated <laughs> to approach me and talk you? to me and like, right? I know. It's, dude, it's right in your name. I know, gentle it's Jay. Nobody gentle. remembers. Yeah. Nobody remembers. How, how rough? How rough is that going to be to approach? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, funny, it's not though, like they man. call you Uncle Bad Touch or something. No, you want to hear a funny one, bro? So like, I'm I'm driving I'm driving with Amy Nicoletto, and we were going from Philly to Texas. We were driving all the way across the fucking country, right? And we yeah. stopped. And we're in Illinois, but like a really she's really, the person. Like, she, she's an interesting person. Yeah, so that's got to be cool. fun to he's travel with. Mind. He's really fucking cool. And um, we would like, you know, you can't sit in the car with Just, somebody. Well, well do me a favor. D- describe her. Do me a favor. Uh, describe her for she, us so everybody's very, familiar very with tall. the type of girl. She's very tall. She looks like a cross <laughs> between Lucille Ball and uh, and Lily Munster. That's what okay, she yes. Like. Yes. With yes. huge tits. Huge you know, that's, tits. That's you saying that, not me. I'm not talking about a boo. She'll punch her right in the face. <laughs> oh, we'll see. <laughs> Bro, she, she I has knocked more than I one man out in her life. That girl can fight. Oh, no, I, don't mess with her. I, dude, she's from Jersey. Yeah, don't fuck she's with her. She's a Jersey bro. girl. She, I, and she I, also, I, you know, she went to school with Danzig. Like, she grew up around, like, yeah. the Nixness and all that. So, like, the girl's been in a mosh pit or two. She knows how to handle herself. You don't you don't want to piss her off. Yeah. She hurt one of my friends with, with her because she was like, I'm going to help you meet this, you know, because he's a big fan. And then he seen her, and she was back, in, and she was like going to get him backstage at this concert with Misfits, and then she couldn't do it. But then she, instead of like just being honest and being like, "Hey, I don't have the pull that I should or that I thought," she kind of like ghosted him. And then she was like, "Yeah, I can't even get in myself." And then they saw her like behind the barricade hanging out, and they were like yelling, "Hey, Amy!" So. There's some hard feelings, kind of, with it, but I, that's how I I did know that she knew Glenn because yeah. because of that. Yeah, yeah, they grew up. And right she looks like it. But yeah, so like we we went to this 
fucking we stop for food because we're starving, and it's like the, a really really rural part of fucking Illinois. Like there's one paved road in this fucking town, and we go to the one place that's got food and it's huge, but there's only like maybe twelve people in there. Okay, in this whole place, and we walk in, yeah. and everybody's just fucking staring, right? And you you could see them googling and looking at us and talking about us and pointing, okay? And we're just sitting there, and she's like, she's like, you see this fucking shit? And I'm like, yeah, I see it. So they, I keep, I'm watching this happen, bro. These people elect a little girl, like a seven year old girl, right, to come over and ask us. And she comes over and she goes like with this squeaky little voice. She's like, excuse me? And I'm like, <laughs> I go, yeah, what's up? She goes, are, are, are you guys on TV? And I'm like, and we both just look at each other. We like roll our eyes we're like, yep. <laughs> and the next thing you know, we had to take pictures with everybody in the fucking place, everybody that works at the fucking place, the two other people that walked in after this had already started. You know, like it was fucking insane, dude. It was nuts. And it, it, I don't know. It was just really fucking crazy. It was fun. I don't remember the point of my story, though. Oh, people, I think it was just about fame, about, about people, how that shit's no, no, different. No, people, people making a big deal because then after that, Right, we were leaving, mm -hmm. and I think it was like one other person was like, "Hey, can we get another picture or whatever?" And we were like, we had just taken a whole bunch. Right, and it was like honestly, we, you know, like we stopped. You were done we with it, it, but we were getting in the car. Like we got to get back on the like road. Like that's over. And then yeah. it was all like you got, you could see. Like we didn't hear anything, but like through the window, you could see the face. Like, oh, they're too good. You know what I mean? Like, fucking fuck you. Yeah. You know. Right. Right. Nothing's enough. It's yeah. never enough. Well, I get one guy, I'm, I'm tattooing one time. To them, you don't even tell them how fucking ugly they are, and then the next thing you know, they're giving you shit because you wouldn't take one extra picture. Yep. You know what I mean? I got I got a guy that stopped me tattooing. I'm, I got my headphones on. I usually try to do that to keep this exact instance from happening. So I got my headphones on, and uh, and I hear somebody, Kyle, hey, hey, Kyle, you know I'm tattooing. So that takes concentration. So I finish up my line or whatever I'm doing, and I look up. And he's like, hey, you got a second? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I made the huge mistake of, of, you know, just addressing the obvious simply with a word and a, a shrug. I was like, no. And, and then he turned and he was just like, oh, fine. I guess you are a fucking dick. I should have known because you were on TV. Fucking, I'm like, oh, well, now the truth comes out. You know, yeah. you didn't even want to. You thought I was a dick on TV. Yeah, don't get to know me like this. Yeah, but certainly yeah, yeah. not, you know, you're being the dick in this scenario. Like, how do I got to be above what you are? However, I, since I then, have I have. Ready for this? Yeah. I went to a fucking yes. convention in Florida. I remember that it was Florida because it was like real humid and we're smoking a lot of joints outside. So anyway, this guy comes Tampa? up to me. Tampa? Yeah, Tampa. There you go. So this dude comes up to me, right? And he's all, first he's like, I'm a huge fan. He does that whole thing. So I was like, yeah, yeah whatever. Cool. Thank you. You know? So then, um, so then he's like, yo, listen, man, you want to smoke a joint? Whatever. I never say no. I'm like, yeah, fine. Let's fucking smoke. So then we're smoking, and he goes, yo, man, I fucking, I'm, I invented this machine. And I'm like, you invented this machine? He goes, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I made it, and blah, blah, blah. He's like telling me all about this goddamn thing. So I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. He goes, Was it hey, a tattoo man, machine? Would, yeah. So he goes, hey, would you try it? So I'm like, yeah, send me a sample, and I'll fucking give it a whirl. I'll tell you what I think. So he's like, I could see in his face something's different. So he's like, okay, okay, cool. Thanks a lot, man. And he like, he does the whole kiss my ass goodbye, you know? But I could hmm. see in his face, like, something was weird. I picked up on it. But I couldn't tell what it was. So I'm just like, whatever, I'm going to go. Finish the convention, right? It's like, that was like on yeah. Friday, okay? That was the beginning. I didn't see the dude for the rest of the convention. I get home, okay? <laughs> I don't check my messages and shit when I'm away. I wait till I get dude, home. Dude, I remember this guy. I remember this guy. I was I there in Tampa. Okay, yeah, he had, he had a so, dildo machine. Yeah, so then he fucking sends me a message. How dare you ask me to send you a free sample machine knowing that I have to lay out all this money to build it, and I'm not rich like you. I'm not all over TV <laughs> and everything else, and you're a fucking scumbag because you wouldn't buy one of my machines. And I'm like, yeah, 
buy your machine without ever trying it? Like, who the fuck does that? Who buys a car without driving it? Like, what are you, fucking stupid? No, uh, he, he showed me his machine, and he, he did want money, and he was giving a deal on it that weekend. And you could kind of tell that he was sourcing, like, the money that he made, he was going to try and put back into the development. Because when you were working with the tattoo machine or even just he was, I don't think I used it at any time, there were problems with it. It wasn't the best, right? And it was, if I remember correctly, it was shaky and loud. Yeah, and so I, yeah, I made no, a comment. A good one. Yeah. So I make a comment about it being shaky and loud. He makes an excuse how the next one's going to be better because he's kind of making the money. He's hoping to sell this one to get the research to make the next one better. And I, right, I said right, the right. same thing. Like, yeah, if you wanted to give me one, but I'm not in the mood, you know, I'm not, I'm not in the position to buy a machine because I got this one that I love. So I'm not trying to buy any machines right now. And uh, he didn't get mad at me about it, though. I didn't. I guess I didn't make a suggestion to him to give me one, but it obviously wasn't a suggestion either. That's just standard. Like, if you want me to blow up your shit, you got to let me use it. Yeah, this guy Can't. wanted me. He was upset. He even wrote it in the message. He was upset that I I wanted to fucking use his machine for free, that he apparently spent so much money designing and building. I'm like, you got to be fucking That's kidding, son. Doesn't make sense. So whatever, man. I, I, you know what I'm saying, though. Like, that's just the way people I do. come at you different. And that's the thing I've noticed. Like, maybe I've changed, but I think I've changed because, A, I learned a lot of shit about the world that, like, you don't really get to learn until you become a little disillusioned. And then also, um, you know, people start treating you different. Like, they assume that you're different, so they come at you in a different way. Like, I've never had so many people come up to me and just act like they fucking know me. Yo, Jay, what's up? Like, you know, you know on, on their defense, they do know you though too. Right. You know, well, like, know, and I think that's what we get that, that we don't understand. By Viacom. They know a character yeah. that was created yeah. through editing by Viacom. They don't know me. They don't know shit about me. They don't know shit about my work. They don't know shit about my tattoos. Nothing. They don't but know they feel about me they the edited they version. feel invested. They they gave you and and I. I've, Honestly, since uh, I kind of chastised that guy with that one word response, I've actually, I try to be more careful about not doing it now because, you know me, I'm a fucking, I'm a pussy. But I, I, I don't want to hurt him because, honestly, I do feel like they gave me so much of their time and their interest. And even though it would be easy for me to say, well, fuck you, it never put any, anything on my table, fucking A, I kind of, if I want it to, then I better respect it as it does. Does that make sense? No, I get it. Like, I, like, like I said, I try to be nice to everybody, but I answer just respect okay. the same way every single time. I don't care. I don't care who you are. I don't care what it means. I'm not going to be right. gonna tolerated. It's just not going to happen. Do you feel that people, um, that they don't realize they're disrespecting you sometimes? Oh, yeah. And that, that they, because they, they see you as just a like character. You're, you're a TV character. You're not a real person. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah. You spent some time in their living room. Yeah, exactly. and now they own a bit of you. They expect you to respond a certain way. Or one thing that they can come away with, Dave Chappelle points it out, is like sometimes they just want to get that from you because they can't wait to go and talk shit about you. Oh, yeah, right. I met Kyle. He was tattooing, and he didn't have no fucking time for any of his fans. He was a real yeah. dick. Yeah, I can't, that, he can't exactly wait to spread that story. Think. He thinks he's fucking too good for everybody. I, get, I, I know. He fucking yeah, he seemed cool on everybody. the show. I got I, I got a different story though. I met the guy. Fuck that dude. Yeah, fuck that Some dude. Some people are happy to be that. Yeah. No, no. I, don't, I honestly don't like I, I take a lot of it with a grain of salt. Most of the time when people send me stupid idiot messages, I don't even like I don't answer them, you know what I mean? But every once in a while <laughs> You don't have a person for that? Every once in no I mean I do, but you know, I still have my own okay. phone. I still look sometimes. So like Right. Like the other day, right? Just because, like, sometimes I just think of a good response, so I'll just say it, and then I'll block the yeah. person right away because I'm like, ha fuck you, I got the worst word, right? Right. But, and now they got that feature where you can also block any accounts they create in the future, which is fucking amazing. I love that. So, um, no, I didn't know that was possible. Yep, yep, yep. That's a new thing. So, um, that's nice. Somebody sent me something the other day, and it was something like, "Hey, I bet you." I bet you trace all your tattoos like a bitch or something like that, right? So I responded. <laughs> right. So I responded, hey, 
I bet the sex change operation was real easy considering your dick was already the size of a clit. And then I just blocked him before he could answer me back. <laughs> that makes it harder for the sex change operation, though. I know too much about this, actually. No, I but... figured then you just cut off the ball sack and tuck it inside there. You make yourself like a nice, weird little granny vag with it. That's my understanding is they do tuck it inside, but if it's too small, what do they do? They take then the it... balls and they just stuff them way up inside until they become ovaries. You you know I I don't know about the testes. Honestly, it seems I'm, like I'm they might want to take the, the testes. Time. Wouldn't they want to take the testes possibly because they're just going to give hormones off? It? I don't know. To a guy that needs them. You know, how many <laughs> you know guys a lot of people that no need balls balls. like you who would just want to get a pair back. You know what I mean? <laughs> how much would, uh, how much uh, do you think is the proper price for for somebody with no balls like me to I pay mean, for totally a set? It depends on what you. A diamond has no value, but that what you place on it, Kyle. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Whatever, whatever right. they're worth, market value. I wonder <laughs> how much would it be worth for me to get my balls back? I don't know. I don't think I'd spend more than five bucks for it. You know, I'm looking forward to when my dick don't work, dude. Like, can you imagine? Yeah, like not being controlled by that thing. I, yeah. I'll be like, I'll be free you for the I first time goals, in my life. My <laughs> you're you gonna be going. You're gonna be different things. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah, I just want to go antiquing on the East Coast. You know, yeah. maybe pick up a nice, a nice. Uh, uh, Dresser drawers, chest of drawers, or possibly a con a concerza. What do they call it? Con concienza? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Furniture. But I look forward to learning. But the reason I don't know anything about furniture is because I got a dick and I spent all my time answering its call. You know. See. Well, I'm gonna learn so much about furniture. Actually, if I start to explain what we're sitting in when we're all hanging out at a hotel or something, they're like, actually, this is Victorian reprints. It's uh, it's pretty high class. Then you can be like, oh, Kyle's dick. Don't work. <laughs> yeah, slide we'll slide me in. Furniture. We'll know it's over. Yeah, slide me an Enzite and see if I don't change the topic that weekend. Then then I start noticing bitches walking by again. Right. Oh, look at that ass. Do a James Bond. Want to thank your mama. <laughs> <laughs> work it, girl. You've been traveling for a minute with everybody, so you, you, you're traveling. I think some of the people ask me all the time, they say, do you guys see each other? Do you guys talk anymore? And to, to, for us, at least, the answer is yes. We see a lot of people from the, because we do Villain Arts Tattoo Conventions. Yeah. We do Steve Teff's Tattoo Convention in uh, Connecticut at the, what, Mohican Sun. Yeah, Mohican so we do Sun. these. Tom, hey, where, give me a website for that, too. What's what's the website on that? Do you know the name? Just New England Tattoo Convention. Um, I know they definitely have an Instagram page. And what? It, or or they could go to Tommy Supply probably, too, yeah, right? They can go to Tommy Supply. You go to Steve Teff's page it's on both of those. Okay, right on. Uh, but at any rate, they, they do these. we do these conventions. We see each other all the time, kind of. Like, I, I, this is not uncomfortable for me to, to yeah, catch up there with are you, because people that you see just because they're in your area too. Like Maid Rich doesn't live very mm -hmm. far from me. Um, you see him? I was going to get him on the show I'll next. Thing. He's he's a busy dude though. He does a lot of his own shit. You know what I mean? He's got yeah. a lot going on. He's also working a lot with a. He does some sort of a podcast thing or something. He's got some kind of a mentoring thing going on. I don't know. He's busy. Right on. I look forward to asking him about he's it. Always doing something. Uh, yeah, I got um. Th there's a there's a actually he he reached out to me or my wife reached out to him or Mark reached out to somebody I think, and they got and and that's what he's saying he had a bunch of stuff kind of that he he promote or something, yeah. like like mentoring. What is it with dude? Artists, it, it sounded I, it's I got artists, a joke with him about this because he was like he said it was the it was the black experience, and I was like some root shit man. I don't know man. I still haven't got my white privilege yet. I don't know if I want to do the black experience. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, what I've seen about it, I watched Twelve Years a Slave. It don't seem so good, but no, all right, I'll let I'll, good at all. I'll let you sell it to me, but <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I, I look forward to catching up with him. I, who else do you see there? Yeah, obviously Angel. You see him uh, every time yeah, you go I mean, to work. I, still talk, I talk to Halo. I see Angel. Um, who else? I'm trying to think now. I don't categorize people as like from the show anymore, just because. You know what I mean? I try, I try to keep that part in my past now. 
But, well, uh, think about it then for this question. Who do you, do you think of anybody that stands out to you that when you met him, you were like, this is not the person I knew from the show. Like, this is way different, this person. Yeah, yeah, there's, I mean, a lot, honestly. There's a lot of people like that. But the ones that are, that are more disturbing aren't the ones that changed. They're the ones that seem to be unchanged by it. That's more disturbing to me. Who's that? Uh, or do you want not, or should we not know anything? Exactly you know, I want anyone. it. Because anybody who I would say I'm not really, like, on good terms with anyway, so there's no point in starting. No reason anything. making it worse. No reason to start anything. But there are people that I, I see from before. Or, or there's one that I knew way before the show, and we were friends. And then after the show, that person just, I don't recognize them at all. At all. Right. You know, I know again, like I'm not going to I'm not going to start beef or anything. I'm not going to say names, but that's a real thing. But then there are other people that like I feel like we bonded when we were in there and like I don't have to talk to them on an everyday basis or like check in on, on them here and there. Like if it goes a year and we don't speak to each other, as soon as we talk, we pick up right where we left off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's like you that. and I for one. Yeah, me and you. Every time we talk, it's like there's been no time apart. We we, we click right away. Yeah, you, know, you always I, remind I like me of I my brother. Same, yeah, yeah, definitely, bro. And I, I I feel like I had the same kind of a thing like with Ruck, and with Halo too. Like I just I don't know. Every time I see those guys, it's like no time has passed in between. You know. Right. Ruck Ruck's twenty one. I ain't cool, seen man. him in a minute though. Yeah, I yeah, I like. Got along right away. He's another one. Like the second I met him, I was like, all right, I can I can hang out with this guy. Uh, yeah, you probably haven't met ES, have you? I feel like him and ES are are kind of similar in that, like that kind of chill, oh, cool wait, vibe. Yes, yes, I did meet ES. He was there um, when I did my redemption episode. He was there filming his because, like, what they film, they show it all out of sequence. You know what I mean? Right. Like my episode mean, was one of the first ones they filmed, but they saved it for the end of the season. Oh, it was one of the good ones, huh? I got my whole. I was the only one that got my own redemption episode that I know of. There was nobody else. How the fuck did that work? With how do they even expect that to work? Because when they call you up, you ain't staying three days. So how are you going to do three tattoos? I did two tattoos. Because you told one of them to fuck off, or what? I told one of them to fuck off. Yeah. It was the guy who'd you tell the fuck off? It It was the guy from the Warrior Challenge. That fucking lisping cunt rag from Staten Island. Hmm. I don't and remember. Oh, I wasn't there, was you I? Watch it, you'll see. You're like, they don't make mama's boys any more stereotypical than this cocksucker. <laughs> right they on. just don't. They just don't. He was, and the, and wait, on my redemption did, episode, I ripped him to shreds, and they wouldn't air any of it because this kid left yeah. there. He left in a screaming fit that he was going to sue them and sue the show, and they brought him there under false pretenses, and he thought he was well, going to have the chance to tell me off. I, oh, okay. You want to hear? I'm, I'm actually yeah. okay. You know, you know that <laughs> you I, I love, you know, I love psychological warfare, right? So, yes. So, I, if not, I, we, I, I do also, know. One of the other things I love is turning shit around on the producers when they try to use it against me. So I got the chance to do both on my redemption episode. They bombarded me with three people, right? And when they brought the first one in, and then I saw the second one coming, I knew right away. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, because then I knew there was going to be three, because I, I was expecting the lispy piece of shit as the only one. You know what right. I mean? So you so knew I'm they'd like, save so him I for the last two. Coming. Either way, I knew he was going to be there. So I saw it yelling at the two of them, basically just telling them, like, honestly, fuck your expectations. If you want a good tattoo, pay for it. Like, break out your fucking right. wallet and go to, a, go to a tattoo artist who's not being fucked with by a production crew, and then you can complain. Right? I said all that. As I'm, I'm finishing up that rant, they bring the other one in, okay? And he's trying to look all big, and he's walking in all full of piss and vinegar, right? So I position yeah. myself to where I almost give him my back, but I can see him out of my peripheral. And I continue talking, and I, like, enunciated my point with a bunch of fucking hand gestures, okay? And then as soon <laughs> as I was done, I turn around, I fucking make, like, intense eye contact with this asshole, and I point right at his face, and I go, I've been waiting for you. And, dude. <laughs> did they leave the that piss, in at least? All, yes, they did. And all the pink okay. and vinegar went right out of this fucking kid. 
all of his balls, he shriveled right up like a little fucking raisin. And then I just went, I was just like, you look very nice today. Did your mommy lay your outfit out on the bed? I bet she did. And that started it. That He was like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, <laughs> that's fucking nerd. You know what I mean? So right. I, I shredded this kid. I shredded him. They edited it to where basically it looked like he said he didn't want to get tattooed by me, and I said I didn't want to tattoo him. But I said, right after I said, I've been waiting for you, I said, don't even think you're getting fucking tattooed today. That one they cut out. Right. And then then I said it again later, and they left that one in. But, yeah, so I fucking, they, everything they tried to do to me on that one, I fucking shoved it right back in their face. Then, off camera, I got the guy to admit that he had absolutely no problem with his tattoo. It healed great. He just wanted to be on TV again. And then the girl, she was like, I was really just upset that I got all my friends together and I told them I'm going to be on TV. Watch this. And then you were mad and said you wanted to drop a toolbox on my head. And she goes, even though they made fun of my tattoo, that was the girl that got all the boxes. She goes, even though they made fun of my tattoo, I love it, and I still love it. So I didn't do anything but add on to that tattoo. Wait, Keith Differendorfer did the boxes. Negative. Or did, what, me. You, did, you did a mosaic? I did the boxes on that girl. It looked like like a crazy wall of Tetris on her, on her like, side okay. by her kidney. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I recall. That was a geometric challenge where, like, I had... Yeah, you could have won had, that. I was, I was ready Not to win that. that shit. I was like, I can follow, I love geometric. I'm going to nail this. Nobody's going to be able to do fine lines like me, and the bitch wouldn't let me do it. Right. She negated everything I wanted to do and made it all about... <laughs> I re you know, I was right. Of course you know. I was right next to you. And that's that's one... Like, people I always ask her behind-the-scenes shit. Well, here's some behind-the-scenes shit. It's rough to be in a room next to you, motherfucker. You're loud as shit. I know. I have a big <laughs> that whole time. Yeah, yeah, big person. I fill up all of that room. And they had, they didn't have the ceilings over top either, so it kind of like shared, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Amplifies space. what you're saying. Oh yeah, I remember you talking to her. I remember, remember all that. that. Oh no, I don't know. I don't remember what you were saying. But what? what? Was I, saying? I don't even. Oh, remember I don't what remember. I I, I remember that it was rough because I knew that, like, you were doing a tattoo that I knew had no chance of winning. <laughs> so oh, I'm no, listening to the conversation too, over there. Off, and I was just trying to speed through it. Right. Yep. Yep. You and so there was, was a lot. Of dude, it was 99 boxes. And in those 99 boxes, there, each box had a fucking two-layer color transition. So I had to okay. do, and they were all different colors. So I had to do 99 color transitions. But what a silly tattoo. Why does somebody even want that? crazy thick line work, that fucking thing took me right to the edge of the time limit. Like, why why did she want it. that? What was her excuse for she wanting that? She said that that's what she wanted. That's what she, like, that was out of everything. That was the only thing she wanted. I showed her beautiful geometric stuff that was like optical illusions. It would have it, right. it worked with the shape of her body. She wanted nothing to do with it. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Canvases are well, funny. I might as well have been showing her, you know, fucking ass cheese. Like, it was, she, she wanted no part of it. I wasn't aware that they gave them a speech collectively, like, as a group. Yeah. yeah as, I only as know you that, say like I said, because I, I knew the actual person that did it. Right. But you could, you could tell sometimes they would that. switch, but I, couldn't, I didn't know that, some, that they would tell them all. Because some people wouldn't. Some no, people no, just they, get their they, tattoo and people, shut up. Some of the people would just refuse to be that way. They yeah, they're like, no, I'm here for the free tattoo. I just want a good tattoo. They would zone in mm -hmm. mostly on the ones that wanted the attention. Yeah, yeah. If they had a carrot to dangle, I noticed. Because there, if they wanted to be an actor or if they wanted to be remembered, if like that girl says she wanted, she got all her friends together to watch mm -hmm. her on TV. Yep. Well, then, of course, you're going to be able to control that one. Yep. You're going to be able to make her stupid. But, yep. Ah, God bless him. At least they made it entertaining. Because yeah, uh, at least it's back, not best thing. Didn't have a problem with the tattoo. She just wanted to add to it. He was just mad at me for saying what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was on redemption with a uh, a Puerto Rican dude that wouldn't let me do it, and I told them that I shouldn't. I, was, I told them from the beginning that I wouldn't tattoo him, and that if I saw him, we would probably fight. And this, these are all things that they 100% knew. 
Yeah, they want that. You know what I mean? It was surprising to me to see how badly they did want it. Because they still brought him in, and you're like, why Why would you? Like, I, in my opinion, because of the way, I don't, you didn't know it, but me, me and this douchebag, we had seen each other at the finale. He asked me to touch it up. I said yes. I was going to tattoo him in Westchester. We did emails back and forth, and then I gave him the deposit. I was like, hey, get me a deposit on, on the tattoo, and here's the price of it. It will be this. And it was a good deal, dude. And he was like, why would I pay on a free tattoo? Why would I pay a deposit on a free tattoo? That's what I'm like, saying, dude. Meanwhile, you remember that big-ass pirate ship I did on that dude's leg? Yeah, yep. I tattooed that guy like fucking ten more times after that. <laughs> he wound up becoming one of my clients because he lived on Long Island. Well, they didn't bring him on, and a- did they ask him to talk shit about your tattoo so that I he think, could come back? I think they did hit him up. I think they did. But they like, they I hit him all up. I mean, on. I wound up adding on to that fucking pirate ship and turning it into like a whole giant scene on his leg. Like he loved that fucking tattoo. That thing came out awesome. It's uh, it's funny the way they do manipulate the canvases, us, and all the all the pieces you know that they have. I feel like they just need as many levers as they can. They want as much control over as many different aspects of production as possible. But see, that's the point. It's the control. Because if you remember, there was plenty of other drama that they weren't looking for that was there. That they didn't want Nobody hooked up on our season. Nobody hooked up on our season, right? Um, Well, what do you count? (laughs) I guess Maddie hooked up, but that was with like a production. That was somebody, my favorite right? thing ever. Motherfucker staying up late running game. I was like, look at you. I knew we had a plan. <laughs> yeah. Well, his his plan was just being Maddie, I think. Being like, I think Maddie likes to drink. And his plan no, was usually no just to. Really? Yeah. <laughs> just to be drunk. He was land. He was raised in the land of moonshine. Yes, he likes to drink. Yeah, and then he ended up getting a hand job from that produ- production girl, right? <laughs> like she chased him around the house. <laughs> I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I don't remember. I can't remember. I wasn't there. I just. I, I heard it in hindsight. I'll never forget it because I remember that girl. I got her friend fired. Remember, it was yeah, it was originally her. And remember that girl that was a fucking bitch. Every time Which she would one? give us our phones and stuff. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then remember she wasn't we there? Like, we got to get rid of this one. Okay, so they, as, as everybody said, you know, we got to get rid of this one. So her boss comes to me and he's like, Kyle, what's your opinion of this girl? And I'm like, she's a fucking cunt, you know? And I was like, I don't know her from nothing else but this show, but she ain't trying to be nobody that ain't a cunt, so she's a cunt. And he was like, yeah, what do, what do you got? Because sometimes, you know, she comes from this. And he almost started to try and downplay my expectations of what she her, she should be doing and providing, you know. Yeah. And then uh, and then I hit him up with it. I was like, she got that Ambien from me, too, and I wish I never gave it to her. And he was like, whoa, whoa, wait, what? Uh, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what did it. I didn't even I think about it, but wait. Attitude. So I didn't give her an Ambien like, hey, I want to give you an Ambien. I offered it to Sausage. You couldn't sleep. And I didn't even want to give him any. I only had so many to go through, the, you know, for my whole time there. So, like, I didn't want to re-up or need any more. But I remember the first time I was through, I was having a hard time sleeping. So I, I had some Ambien, right? So I was like, hey, uh, Sausage, you having a hard time sleeping? You want an Ambien? And he said no. And I, he didn't even say no before she said, I, I'll take one. And I was ready to be like, fuck, fuck you, bitch. Who the fuck are you? You cunt. You're always cunt. But then I was like, you know what? I don't mind. You know, I, I come from a, I, I have an understanding of the way drugs work. And they are always control too, right? So it was like an opportunity for me to get a little control too. And yeah. so I did. And it gave me more control than I than I even thought about until that moment. And I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, that bitch took an ambient from me. Like, yeah, she shouldn't do that, right? Yeah, that's that's, that's uh, like illegal. That it's illegal for me to do, but it's also illegal for her to do. It's more illegal for her. Uh, certainly, it's it's more actionable on the employment 
But you know what? She didn't get fired. They they uh, made her a line production. So all of our uh, our purchases got approved through her then. Yeah. If you follow me, so like exactly. our food and shit like that got purchased, and I don't know that that isn't why we had to stay up until fucking three o'clock in the morning almost. I think it was actually more like one, but waiting on that sushi, sushi the day that uh, Maddie Hickson had us all cracking up. Yeah. We we waited till one to fuck. Who the fuck? How do you not get sushi before? Like how do you even get it at one o'clock? They had that sitting there, and I think they were probably fucking it. You yeah. know. Like how? Yeah. Did, who even? Who makes sushi at one o'clock in the morning? I mean, in New York, a lot of people, but not in Jersey. Right, but not in Jersey. Not in Ironbound, New Jersey. No, and they always want everybody to think that you're in New York, but they always show New York City from the Jersey side. So anybody from there is like, you're in Jersey. Yeah, you're a New Yorker. So how'd that make you feel? Oh, I, I said it right off the bat. I was like, you know, you guys always show it from the fucking wrong side, right? And they're like, yeah, we just go out on the smoking deck and film it. I'm like, that's what I thought. <laughs> right on. That's what I thought. Yeah. Fucking lazy. Even though they're making hundreds <laughs> of millions of dollars off of people that they don't have to pay, they're still somehow lazy. Figure that out. You know, it wasn't a, I mean, one of the greater successes, I believe, one of the greater successes of the show was probably that they started out with a pretty small shoestring budget. And Andrea Richter, I think the credit that could be given to her possibly the most is that is one of her jobs as a as executive producer is to call the shots on payments and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so, like, how do we want to spend our resources? And I think they did a very good job spending their resources in a way that uh, helped it grow. I think they did a poor job continuing – to give people what they were tuning in for. But yeah. I think that they were actually trying for a different demographic that they eventually achieved, which was they, they showed the tattoos so little. It was like two seconds, you know, oh, if know. you saw it that long. And yeah. people would come to me and they would say it's like it, they felt like they were getting all the, like if they sat down to a meal, they were getting the all cake, the yeah. all frosting, you know, no, no fucking dinner. Yeah, because the dinner to them was the finished piece of a good piece of work. And I, I didn't understand that because it seemed like they were getting better artists. So it seems like there would have been some really awesome tattoos yeah, they to show off. Every year, the producers were more and more involved. And, like, after, uh, after season four, that's when it turned to all gimmicks, you know? Yeah, after it was. Wasn't four, that... All of a sudden, it was Rivals and Shop Wars and fucking yeah. Apprentice versus yeah. whatever. And it's like, so now... You've turned it into this thing. You found a way to make reality show characters without having to pay reality show prices to the actors or the personalities that you're depicting. Because you're right. still saying that it's about the artwork, even though it's not. It's barely about the artwork at this point. You know what it's I mean? It's about the artist. Yeah. It becomes about the artist. Right. One thing I feel somewhat jaded on is exactly that you've pointed out in in your article is that the the no no one's tuning in to see what Nunez has to say today. No one's tuning in to find out about Dave Navarro or um Oliver's progression as an artist or whatever they're doing. Like they're there because of us. This new batch that they get to go through the story with. And you do feel kind of jaded when you're like you see your artwork on the cover of their uh, coloring book. In, in yep. my case, it's on the fucking cover. Yep. And I remember you guys beating it up, telling me that the girl's forehead was too high. Mm -hmm. And and me not knowing if I should argue back with you and, and point out that you're just an idiot. Books. We don't get paid on any of those books. We don't no, get paid yeah. on any time the show airs. We don't get paid any time they decide to use any of our likenesses for any kind of promotion. But it is our our um, storylines that drive the whole show. That I don't think anybody tunes up for the others, you know? And so even no. though those guys are stars and they're getting this extravagant payment for for the amount of work they're doing and being treated lavishly. Hey, yeah. let me ask you about the, the harassment of, no, you weren't there. It was, it was season three we got to see the girls harassed. You didn't get to see it at all. What they happened? were dealing with, with the, uh, in season three they harassed, um, of one of the assistants 
pretty pretty badly until she sued them. And I witnessed some of the harassment, but from a third person, I thought that they were friends or something, you know? I thought that they were just, like, super close and, like, they were fucking with each other. Like, you know, if 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 you go to hand me a water bottle and then I take a drink and hand it back to you and then you go to grab it from me and I throw it across the room before you can, that's kind of funny, you know? We might fuck around like that. It is, yeah, but, but not, not to somebody you don't know. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I found out. They did know her, but they were trying to get her fired or something. They were fucking with her specifically. They were saying shit to her like, uh, do you like to suck dick? Um, she was saying she felt sick one day, and they're like, are you pregnant? Maybe if you sucked more dick instead of sucking <laughs> shit like that to her, you know, asking her, her if she was on her period and then asking her if she was pregnant. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, I wanted to ask your opinion on that, but obviously you hadn't seen it. No, I didn't see any of that. And, <laughs> and, and nothing. Still a season four. Season four, as far as that went, that was not, that's not the events that were really going on, you know? No, Nunez was dealing, they were both actually dealing with that harassment trial in court at the time. And then Nunez was dealing with uh, his son being born. And right. yeah, I believe his wife was finding out. I mean, that's got to be a hard time. So your son's being born and you're being uh, going through a trial for sexual harassment. Yeah, yeah. Like, that doesn't make it easy with your wife, right? Who's already like... Didn't he get locked up for domestic abuse, too? That I don't know. I I, I I don't know that I'd be surprised, but he he seems like he's he's, he's a little bit on the domestic abuse side. He seems like the type... The only thing that really happened on our season that I know about that was on that, like, shady, might have hooked up side is, um, remember when Scott was getting real drunk? He went on that bender, and, like, before that, he kept sneaking into the <laughs> yeah. girls' rooms every night? Well, yeah, just he, he just wanted to cuddle. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what they to told the me he was saying. To cuddle. That's what was happening, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's when we didn't get alcohol anymore. They took our alcohol for some time after that. Yeah, well, because, but you see, that's how, and that was another thing that told me, like, this guy is definitely the one they want to win, because he went on a bender, and they shut down production for a day. Nobody, they wouldn't do that for anybody else. Really? I didn't know that. You don't remember that? that? I, I'm pretty sure there was a lot of people still No, we, when that we got shut down uh, for, when they found out the carbon monoxide leak was real. No, that was a different... That and was that was one. just after he had a he had a drunk episode. I thought that was just after no, no, he the uh, itself, was it was a day. It was a day where we were like they wound up saying, you know what, we're not gonna film tomorrow or whatever and we all fucking nobody filmed and I I fucking go to bed or whatever, right? I wake up mm-hmm. at seven o'clock in the fucking morning, I hear I hear Slayer, right? And it's playing like right. Pretty loud. I open my eyes. Scott is sitting on my bed. He's wearing these big fucking headphones, and he's got them off his ears. They're like on his temples, and they're blasting fucking Slayer. Okay, and he's sitting on my bed, and he has definitely been crying. And I'm like, <laughs> and I go, uh, what are you doing, man? And he goes, are you all drunk? All fucking drunk. He's like, I just wanted to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, listen to me. You're a fucking grown man sitting on my bed while I'm sleeping. Get the fuck off my bed, and then we can talk. And he was like, I don't want to tell you, like, I don't hate you, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to compete. And I was like, I don't give a shit. I'm not kidding. Get the fuck off my bed. So then he gets up, right. and, he, and he, went, he wanders over across the room, and he does the same move to Ruck. Okay. And I could see right. Ruck's face. Like, Ruck got up ready to swing. He was like, what the fuck are you doing in here? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't Ruck. So, you can see what it's... Yes. Yeah. Yes. And He's so, about it. Scott, like, proceeded to tell him, right, how... I- He's not racist. He just doesn't feel comfortable around black people ever since jail. And I was like, that's the definition of racism. That's the definition of racism, to feel uncomfortable around a person just because they look different than you. That's what it is. What do you mean? Okay? And he's all drunk, and, like, Ruck didn't want no part of it. I heard that. Right. I'm, like, I'm watching this happen. It was one of the more cringy moments of my life. But, yeah, we didn't film that day. They gave him a day to recover. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. No, yeah, you needed it. Got there. Uh, Are you kidding me? They would have thrown us out there. Explain to everybody why you're drunk, Kyle. You know what I mean? Like, it would have been one of those fucking yeah, right. Well, gentle Jay, right. tell us how you got into the liquor cabinet. You know what I mean? Like, that's what, what fucking would have happened. It's the fucking Jägermeister challenge. What did you expect? Yeah. Actually, like the day, and the day before that, he started the day off by, um, he took two monsters, he emptied out half of each one, and he refilled them back with vodka, and he slammed the both of them in, within like two hours. <laughs> And that was when the bender started. Right. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. man. That was a good time. <laughs> it was fun for some stuff. There was some stuff that was fun. You know yeah, I, I kind of hated it. But now when I when I hear it back through your eyes, actually, it's a lot funner, too. But I, you yeah. know what I mean? When, uh, no. when I, one, I'm removed from it now. And then, two, it's, it's like uh, you had a closer view of them getting drunk. I think I stayed away from, cause it was him and Maddie were mostly drinking together. And yeah. I, I must've stayed I did, away I enough that I didn't realize. Too, Cause I couldn't get any weed in there. <laughs> well, I didn't realize they were even working together. That's how much I didn't drink that oh, season. No, I, yeah. No, I always got the feeling that like, I think Maddie was a little intimidated by Scott. So he decided to just jump on his side. Well, that Wolverine day was a stupid move on Maddie's part. That was, that well, seemed no, dumb. It was a smart move. He just dropped the ball. Uh, and they didn't help him out no. with the judging. They didn't help him out with the judging, but he didn't do himself any favors. The hands no, that, man. They looked like, remember the hands? It looked like kitten paws. Yeah, but you got a chance to stand out, and maybe you can stand out against Scott if you think you can. But they're already sucking his dick like that. Why don't you go ahead and give Scott the worst critique he's had yet? Give him the hard tattoo. You know what I'm like? One, nobody else is going to win except for a Wolverine. Dude, it was so a put Wolverine the other Wolverine. You could have given you could have given Scott fucking Professor X, and he would have won. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't believe that. I, I don't, don't think that was possible. Here's well, why. Yeah, Wolverine Listen, had to win because Hugh Jackman was going to be there. That's right. I forgot. There you go. A hundred percent. Right? How does anybody else win? Wait, did you hear? You let know? me ask you this. Did you hear the other thing? Did you hear? Um, you know how season seven, Maddie and a bunch of other people went back and they called like mm -hmm. people that had been there before that, you know, they got to the finals or whatever. So they put them all back in there against like new people. Yeah. Right? So somebody that was on that season, I'm not going to say names again, because I'm not going to put his stuff out there, but you, did you hear the thing that happened that season? Did you hear the rumor that somebody, you know how like they tell you when they bring you down the hall and they're like, all right, wait over here. And then they go and they bring yeah. you to the next like spot. So, like, one of those times they were walking with somebody, and they left him in the production office and, like, all right, stay here for a minute. I'll be right back. I'll come get you. Don't don't touch anything. So, of course, the second the door closed, he starts rummaging through the papers on the desk, and he found right. the list. He found the list in the order that everyone was supposed to be eliminated for the whole season. And they were only at, like, nah. the first five or six. Yeah. Yeah. And then after oh, that, wow. he, he got mad. And he tried to like say something. You can kind of see it in the editing. And then, um, and then after that, they made him sign like a gag order or something. No shit. That's what I heard. No, I was not aware of that. Uh, well, mm -hmm. actually, oh, I'd almost name the name. I I wish I wasn't recording this because I would start to throw some names. So you tell me. You just tell me if it was us. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you knew that we wasn't getting recorded. And I, I'm with you. I don't want to put any energy into oh, yeah, no. when we're something not, when they... When we're not recording but, or when we're not on the air, I would totally just tell you. But, yeah, no, I'm not going to put it out there like that. However, at the same time, without me guessing, let me let me just shore up a couple of things in my own head then. Was that the same season that Joshua went home for smoking? Um, I No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't right think on. so. No, and Josh, that's the other thing. He didn't go home for smoking. Yeah, I yeah, I think I've actually talked no, about that, that season, on, on a that past like episode. That was season five or something, wasn't it? Why did Josh go home? I think it was. Yeah, he came back on five. Yeah, you're he right. Didn't go home. They said it was for smoking weed, but you noticed. Well, that you give your your what comments, you understand. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Give your give give what you understand happened. Yeah, I know somebody Please. that was there. One of the people that was on the show that got to the finals. Um, was there during this whole thing, and it's the same thing with the legal. Dude, department. now you just named that person, hundred yeah. percent in yeah. the finals. Come on, one of three now. 
got to be Whatever. Jay, right? One and three. He was Jay. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm just not saying anything. But listen, so apparently, um, he brought two phones. You know how they take our cell phone away during the day? Like, you yeah. know how you don't get to So he brought yep. a separate phone that was a burner. He brought, that had internet. he brought three of them. He actually and brought he, three, and, but yeah. Yeah, so that's this way. And he was Googling, he was Google imaging because he can't, he can render, he can't create. So like, if you give him nothing to look at, he can't draw. His drawings right. come out like shit. But when he has a picture to look at, it comes out, he's like a fucking copy machine. So right. he knows this. So when he went back there, he brought extra phones and he got caught you know, using Google and, and fucking looking stuff up. And that's why they kicked him off. But it was the legal department that said, we can't make it about this. You can't say that on TV. You can't say this on TV. So they just switched it to being about weed. My Yeah. Uh, Clay Dunn, I believe it was, seen a text um, that, that he showed he showed him stupidly, him and Dom Petticourt, if I'm understanding this right. Mm-hmm. He like was like, hey, guys, check this out. And it was a text from Nunez that said, probably shouldn't let anybody else know that we're talking like this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what a stupid thing to show anybody. Yeah. Like, like what, know, are, what are you also, trying to achieve? Yeah, but that shows you right there. And that's, he's like that. Because I did that fucking New Year's Eve special against him, and they gave him the win because they had to make up for kicking him off the show. And, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was bullshit, dude. The tattoo that they gave him the win on was there was not a part of it that wasn't blown out. He tattooed a guy that was a steroid head. The guy had no collagen in his skin whatsoever. Josh blew out right. every part of that tattoo. I wouldn't be surprised today if there's an inch of blue around the outside of that thing. Have you seen Scott's Wolverine? No. 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 The, well, his face you know? is missing. Yeah, Is it? that guy, the, the guy that gets uh, tattooed, that got that tattoo from Scott, mm-hmm. he gets tattooed by Rich Pineda and Sarah Miller. Oh, okay. And he has beautiful work from both of them, like right. gorgeous, like well healed. So like you're looking at this thigh piece that healed terribly and you can't see Wolverine's face. Every bit of his face is gone, like no eyeballs, no eyebrows, no nose. Wow. Like maybe a slight indent, a slight indentation of all those, and then you can see the hair around it and all the rest. Um, but that guy gets tattooed, and he has a tattoo on the back of his calf of Superman, or the back of his thigh of Superman that Sarah did. Mm-hmm. That is gorgeous. Right. Yeah. And so if you if I, if I was to think that this guy doesn't know how to heal a tattoo or that he doesn't know how to heal that place of a tattoo, then I look to this extremely harder spot to heal of the of the hamstring, and right. I think, hmm, you know. Yeah, no, that's, but, no, no, I know. All that to me just adds up to that my anger comes from understanding that they would even do a competition where there could only be two winners of the day based on, the person who gets handed that choice, you know, like if Hugh Jackman's showing up, obviously Hugh Jackman's going to win. And even more obvious now, because you have two of them, you couldn't award it on the off chance that somehow the worst artist won the competition and controlled the, the, the handout. And he picked for himself something that, that was Wolver- picked the Wolverine. Then you would need a second backup, right? Right. You would, so that's why you would give this one out. But moreover, you would give this one out because what you're expecting is the best artist who won the, chi- the challenge. Of course, he's going to take Wolverine. He is going to win. But now you're going to be able to have it stand in contrast to one of the worst artists because he doesn't want to. Like, if I would give that shit to Roland for sure, you know, oh, yeah. like there ain't there ain't no reason to 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 give somebody another easy day. It's because it's this is a marathon. It's not about the race. So you can even win that. If you win and have the best Wolverine and then Scott comes in right behind you at second place, then you still lost. Yeah. Because Scott's been in first place ever since the beginning. So you need to put Scott down the way somewhere in the bottom. You need to give him a a tattoo like the trailblazer. But he had a chance to keep him out of the top. That's what I've, and I talked with him about that prior to that. <laughs> like I was like, 
I mean, I didn't know that he we were going to the Hugh Jackman. We didn't. I didn't know the Wolverine thing was coming. No, we but didn't. The, right before the episode, when he had that control, I did mention it then. I was like, "Hey, man, somebody's got to slow Scott's wheels down." And I said this to him then, and he actually told me about it later. Is that he kind of had some regret on the on the decisions he made because I said, "Hey, man, nobody remembers who comes in second. Half the time, they don't even remember first. Like everybody from my season remembered tattoo or the, from the season two. They don't remember Steve Teft. They remember Tattoo Baby. Oh yeah. And yeah. people from my season generally, or my third season, generally remember not that, that Joey won, but that I was screwed over or that I was coming back. It was yeah. a bigger deal at the finale for me to be tattooing in the Shark Tank, as they called it, yeah, yeah. and to have all that Twitter interest that they created and made people in, interact with, because it's more about the interaction. And so, like, all that that they created was more important. Then, so I tell him that, you know, like, you don't want to be second or third. You want to be first. And the only way that you're going to be first is if Scott gets slowed down, because I've been here a season before. Nobody's had it that easy. Yeah, no, it was, they, it was like a cakewalk. It was stupid. It was too obvious. They, they didn't They didn't pull that one out for anybody, you know. Even Shane O'Neill had a harder time, and I've heard that he had it in his contract that he had to win. Yeah, I I heard that too. He was guaranteed the money, or he wasn't going to show up. Right. And I can I can understand that. Making calls, spending the money before he had it. <laughs> yeah, I imagine he was. Because I mean, one thing, like if you're Shane O'Neill, on the first season, that's you you. They need you. Yeah, you know what I mean never, because of who you are. Show. In the industry, yeah, they need if if they don't have somebody that's competing of any quality, if they didn't have a Jimmy Litwalk, you know, I, I believe Jimmy Litwalk probably had an easier time being cast on the show. Like for me and you, I, I heard the story about you getting cast it's about the same. Man, they left you. I, I was told I could be sent back the second before we started filming. <laughs> they were like, we're pretty sure now that you're at the double tree that you're golden, but we have a backup. <laughs> like, don't okay. fuck off. Wow. Yeah. No, I and uh, that, who is it? But I got, I got for a while. They were like, yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll see. We got to do the whole outfit thing. After the, after a while, they told me, yeah. But it was like right. You know, Johnny. School. Okay, Johnny. Nobody got sent back. And he was at the airport. Oh no shit. Yeah, and they gave, they called him up and was like, no, nope, it ain't working out this time. Wow. Like, well, fuck, I'm glad I guess I figured out before I got on the airplane. Or at least that's just, that's what I heard, you know. Um, Whatever of it. Fuck them all. Yeah, I, I don't have a sign-off, <laughs> but I do need to get off the phone. Cause yeah, we've been doing this for a while, my man. getting annoyed. <laughs> right on. Uh, then good, <laughs> right on. She, she, she knows me well. Right. Yeah. She knows. Fuck Kyle, that asshole. Hey, uh, anything you want to promote about what you're doing? Of course, talk about Kinetic Tattoo Shop again. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, was there anything else Kinetic, going on? My shop is Kinetic Body Art Gallery in Levittown, New York, Long Island. Um, yeah, I'm I'm going to be expanding that soon. I'm excited about that. Other than that, I still write for the magazine, Villain Arts Magazine. Um, when you plan on what you what? I'm, I'm just, what what tra uh, traveling you plan on doing this year so right people now, can get out and see you too? I don't have anything planned except the New England convention. Oh um, wow! You're not and you're not doing Philly. You said fuck I'm, that. Until I see that it's not the way it was the last time I was in Philly, I will not be doing any right. conventions. I can't put it's up. Hard not to be a part of Philly. It's hard not what? to be a part of it. It's hard not to be a part of Philly though. No, no, Philly's I, such a big listen, show. Philly, Philly. I had a I had a streak of like nine years straight where I got trophies in Philly when it's the biggest show in the world. That's a huge accomplishment. I love Philly. Yeah. It was the first convention I ever did back in 2001. It was, you know, one of the first ones I did. It was the first one I ever Biggest in the world. Yeah. It was fucking, it's like special to me. But I'm not going to be treated like that. I am not going to go and work in a place that turns what I love to do into a miserable experience. Like I did not have fun 
I wasn't happy with working. I wasn't happy doing what I love to do. That's a problem. I'm not signing myself up for it again. So until I see that I can work the way I want to work, I'm just going to do it at my shop where I can do what I want to do. Right. I don't I don't agree with being told what to do. I don't like being told you can't walk here. That's fucking fascism. It pisses me off and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to put myself through isn't, it again. Isn't fascism where the state uh or the 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 government controls the industry? It's where they control everything. You got it's just it's like 1984, basically. Fascism is just being told what to do. You get told what to do. You don't argue. You just do what you're told, like a good little automaton. So no I like to do. No thinking. You just do it. That's why I got the jab. Actually, this is how we started talking about the jab. All yeah. right, I better sign off. Get out <laughs> and of I'm here, spent. man. You're I'm still trying. To I'm trying to sign off long, words. Now I'm leaving. <laughs> I've, I've I've annoyed you too long, and now I'm leaving. I've spoken is too that long. I said? said too much, and now I'm leaving. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I'm stealing that, bro. I've spoken too much. Uh, I've, I've spoken too long. I've said too much. Now I'm leaving. That's Take care, brother. Off. See, I just made that up for you. I get a quarter. Yeah, yeah I love you for it. Yeah, I you're a piece of this forever. Thing, you of Yo, you wait till I start making. If I can make some money on this, then yes, we'll be sharing some shit. But good lord, all don't right. you start me off like all those people did on the on the Ink Master, where they're like, hey, you know, even if you don't win, I'm going to be coming to your back door. <laughs> I, I'd like, I'd like a hundred dollars. Don't I own my? He's like, you got the tattoo, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, this a this. Uh, uh, I don't know. Th they're thinking, they're thinking what? They're thinking that I do need a sign off, and certainly that's the best that I've heard. So oh, yeah, I'll give you a quarter. You Just don't <laughs> listen to it because these things add up. I don't want to have that many. I'll yeah. have to only do it half the time. You know, I'm a cheap motherfucker. Still I don't do record. anything for a quarter. I'll go to the vibrating bed on my honeymoon night and be like, nah, 25 cents. I'm just going to shake this thing a lot. <laughs> Here, go ahead and lay in bed, babe. All the mechanics still probably work. I'll just... Nah. All right. Do it again. Well, You're uh, talking too much now. You're being crazy. <laughs> yeah, I've stayed too long. I've you said too, too much. Long. You said too much. Now you're going to go. Yeah, take care, brother. <laughs> Yo, be good.